Um, but I will say this, there's a few people wondering, wondering about Kerbal Space Program 2. And the fact of the matter is, as is in its current release state, it is early access and all that, I can't do like, I can't really do a full endorsement of the game as is. The fact of the matter is, Kerbal Space Program 1, especially with the modding community, which of course changes all the math, changes all the metrics, Kerbal Space Program 1 is currently a better, more complete game um, than KSP2 currently is. Uh, but we, A, we have high hopes for some short-term improvements in performance and a couple of bugs. Um, and then they do have a roadmap that is very promising. Their plans for KSP2 includes so much more than when it was in KSP1. Um, and so that part is very exciting, but um, you know, whether or not you should go in and pick it up today or not, that's, I mean, that's gonna depend on you. But as we'll see when we get in here, there's gonna be some aspects of the game where it's like, well, if you like things A and B, you're set. If you really like C, then you might be a little disappointed. So we'll see. Yeah, Roadmap one thing, how quickly you can hit the posts is another one. Uh, music's a little loud. We could go and do a little bit of, uh, a little bit of ducking in here. Um, well, I've got some already, so when I stop talking, the music gets louder. In theory. I think I, I've got the... Yeah, I got the compressor running, but I'll bring down the, um... Hey, Quilt, the audio in game a little bit, because everything's set to 100. I'll just, um... I'm betting the engines are going to be sick loud. I'm wondering... I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to bring everything down just to scooch, and then I'll bring music down to scoochums. Like that, and see what we can do. The, like a good sign, a good example of how things are a little bit busted. If you go into the graphics menu here, notice that like for some of these, multiple options seem to be highlighted for some reason. Until you like mouse over and then it like refreshes things and it's like, oh yeah, see medium wasn't actually enabled at the same time as high prop density. There's like really weird stuff. And uh, at least last time I checked, if you went with the quality presets, if you set it to low, the game literally doesn't load. You have to go and like delete your, your settings file <laughs> to get the game to boot. Which, you know, that's a, that, that's what you want to see. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I know KSP1 was Rot Launch, but that's not really a good comparison, because KSP1 was like a one-person little indie solo project, effectively. Some, something, someone was sort of kind of doing at a, in spare time at a company that does other non-game things normally. KSP2 was intended to be a launch with money behind it, a publisher, a team, and this feels like an early tech demo more than anything else. Also, yeah, KSP1 was cheaper. Anyway, um, let's go and read the subs and resubs, and then we're gonna get started so I can put in a proper sort of cut for our Twitch or our YouTube VOD uh, later on down the road. First of all, uh, Clarembot, thank you very much for your contribution to the Whiskey and Chocolate Fund. Again, thank you. Yes, that is wonderful. And yes, I really needed a little bit of something like that after trying to build this computer. It's just stressy, especially when I, I hit the power button and it didn't post, didn't start. Uh, and I was freaked out that I did something wrong. Turned out the uh, motherboard needed a, uh, a firmware update to be able to work with the uh, CPU chip that I had, but it's like, oh my god, I don't want to have to dismantle the whole thing and test everything bit by bit. We got brand new subs from Ganthrax and uh, uh, RD Stoops. Thank you very much for subscribing for the very first time. Welcome to the channel. Join the Discord. Uh, Kentos has resub for their third month. Danny Cat is here for their 95th. Uh, Minak owned or Minak owned at eight months, almost a Twitch baby. Raid Zor is at 19 months. Feed Run is at five. Frank Tykstra is at three months. The Man's at 75. We got another new sub from Local Distortion. Oh yeah, everyone's remembering their, uh, their Twitch Prime today, which is awesome. It's it's free. If you don't use it, then the money just goes to Jeff Bezos and Amazon. And wouldn't you rather it go to someone else? Uh, Steve's as a resub for the 34th month. Jaren is at 10 months. Sochi's at 16. Zadrum's at 26. Fong Owl at 106 months. Uh, Finn Masachu is right behind him at 96 months. Cat Mandos takes the lead though at 110 month resub. Thanks, Cat Mandos. Dai Daliv is at 10 months. Smithy's at 25. Weird Darkness at 45 months. Voodoo Crawfish at 20. Tim Brad's at four months. Malkuth's at 87. RJ Helms at 96. Merlin of Chaos as resub for the 53rd month. Uh, we've also got a bunch of gift subs today. Piano Man dropped a ton in chat. Thank you very much for that, Piano Man. You bring light in as resub for 57 months. Pizza Metris, start us off today uh, by gifting a sub to Pop X, hey, Quill, pay attention which, uh, who resubbed for the 11th month. And 
uh, Felwar Kami is coming in with a brand new sub, Aaron with a brand new sub, and I am Collect as well. Okay, I think we are... Oh, Supernova, 109 months. Fishick at 33, Ghost Farm at one year Twitch anniversary. Blood for the Blood God. Kerbal Blood for the Kerbal Gods. Hey, Quill, <laughs> Two hey, months. Hey, Alex Tries to Game at 70, uh, 17. Joe Pro at nine months. Yabushido at 103 months. Are we good to start? I think we're good to start. Oh, I did. I missed Gallop Scott and Codexus with the resubs. Dual Dragon Lord, Terje. Wow, lots of people coming in all at once. Linaku Crow. 49 months, Tail, Tinker Taylor, Rat Dog, Amazing Kook, T-Bone, and Kentos, and more new subscribers, The Codifier, and AJ Schmid. Okay, let's play some video games. I'll try to catch more people as we go, but we're here to play some games, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're gonna go into single player. Uh, I'm gonna start a new campaign, uh, and I'll call this, uh, I don't know, Lab Streams, sure. Agency name? Um. You know what? I'm going to keep KAS, KSA. I, I like it. And then flags as well. I do like to see that there's a bunch. Normally, we load in our own custom flags, but we're going to use some of these. Uh, I'll, I'll leave the default. It feels appropriate for our first go. We're going to leave what's in there and bug in. Hey, buff. Oh, works can change your schedule. You're always sick with COVID. Haven't been happy. You're much easier this time. Jeez. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy I've still managed to dodge that. I mean, I don't leave the house, so I guess that's easier, right? Or something. I love this 1950s aesthetic. Your new space program, leaping forward into the cosmos. Since the dawn of Kerbal Kine, we have looked to the sky and wondered what sublime mysteries lie hidden. They're trying the to do um. And as a Eismoff? No. These untold treasures may soon reveal themselves due to the approach. Sagan. Carl Sagan. Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new oh subscriber. My. I think that might have been the only copy of the orientation film. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> Slides uh, somewhere. I didn't realize the uh, first day running the Kerbal pop up wasn't in front of the screen. This okay. campus hosts the greatest ever gathering of astronomers, astronauts, and engineers. After years of focused effort, this collection of geniuses has created several very impressive buildings. We believe we have all the necessary pieces to take our first steps off the ground. The best way to advance our technologies further is to get up there and learn by doing. All we need now is somebody to show us how to put all these parts together. Well, we also need somebody to help us out with the flying. We need a lot of help, actually. Hey, Quill, pay That's attention. There's a new subscriber. My name hey, is Codifier? Paige, by the way. If you need any hints, feel free to visit me over at the training center. Everything in there is well padded, so it's a Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new work. subscriber. Welcome aboard. Oh, it's Schmidt. There we go. We're finally catching up. All right. So we can uh, skip past these little messages over here. And there we go. We have the... Kerbal Space Center. Some of it looks familiar, some of it less so. Hey, Quill, pay multiple attention. launch pads subscribe. over there. And uh, yeah, VAB Training Center. So we've got tutorials and various things that we can access here, which is which is good. The, uh, you know, the basic game. I mean, some of us made channels uh, off the fact that the, um, you know, maybe KSP wasn't the most intuitive game to learn in the universe. I don't know if it's going to be that much more intuitive this time either, but it's going to be a little bit easier, presumably. Let's go and make our first ship. Let's just make a super simple dummy spaceship to go into orbit. Confirm that we're comfortable with everything. Confirm that everything works. And then go for the moon. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> yep. Uh-huh. 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 Uh -huh. Oh, I realized I could have turned off these um, these pop-ups, I think, when I created the campaign. So, um, the new screen for the parts over here, I do find that the parts screen is a little bit big. Like, the individual parts are a little big. I think I could probably scrooge them down a little bit more to fit more things on the screen at it's once. whiskey and Person chocolate! Damn, Liquid! Damn! Thank you for helping to pay for the parts for my computer, because... Wow! Wow! 
I missed the Christmas stream, so rather than donate to the Pretzel Rocks Fund, consider this a donation towards new PC. These things can go can quickly get insanely expensive. Cheers. Liquid, thank you very much. And I did actually uh, renew the Pretzel Rock subscription because it has turned out to be so, so very handy to have. Um, I would definitely miss it if it wasn't there. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. You'll pay for at least like 0 0.5 seconds worth of rocket fuel. <laughs> computer fry? No, my computer didn't fry. Uh, it was just, I wasn't really meeting the system requirements for KSP. And overall, we are well due for a refresh, but I'm cheap. You know, not, not any real reason to like, I, I, you know, I was like, if I don't need a new computer, I guess I won't. But it was getting to the point where, I mean, it's literally the job and, you know, I got to do this while streaming. By the way, uh, we, we should now be coming at you at 60 FPS, which is new. I was always just streaming at 30 because like most of the games didn't really care about the frame rate. Um, I just wanted a clear image, but we're running a little bit more. We'll, we'll see how it goes. So yeah, so I, you know, could it be a little tighter? I mean, this is probably, the UI was probably gonna see like tons of modifications over the next five years or whatever. Um, but uh, but yeah, other than that, I mean, looks kind of nice. I like that there's this favorite menu. That's kind of handy. Um, there is no current career mode. So um, I think there's, I think they're talking about they're not gonna do Kerbal Bucks at all this time maybe. Um, but they are, I think science is coming back. The idea of like a tech tree and doing science experiments and locking things. I mean, that's certainly in the plan. I don't remember, I, I, I think they've, they've, they've had conversation about the money. And to be honest, to me, the science part of it like the, the science part of a career mode, going through the tech tree, I find that very important. To me, that's that's the thing that compels me to play. Like I've never really played Kerbal in the sandbox mode unless I sort of just going in to test something because um, to me, the fun is the unlocking. But the money management part of Kerbal was never really that fun to me. Uh, usually it felt like I didn't really have a problem getting the cash, except for every now and again, I would run out for the mission I wanted and then I had to make like, do a couple of random like contracts that I didn't really care for too much. So I'm not personally gonna cry if the money part doesn't come back, but I like the science part um, quite a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's government, you know, raise taxes, the people will pay for it, it's gonna be fine. So the categorization's interesting. I like these little size markers that are in here. Um, I think that's quite cool. And yeah, we can, uh, we can favorite more things. How do you, so you can get the star. Oh, it's the middle click, there it is. To toggle the favorites. Um, I think I personally, for my usefulness, I might prefer like a radius marker on here. Like, is this a 1.5 meter part? Is it a 3.5, 3.25? I can't remember what the, the part sizes go um, in Kerbal. Um, but yeah, I probably would find that more useful, but presumably if you're using small parts, like, and we go through different categories and find more small parts in here, then the radius will keep matching and that's gonna be very convenient over here. So a lot of this UI stuff is quite good. Uh, I like that a lot. So yeah, we're gonna make a very basic ship just to get to orbit um, and then we'll see what we can do after that. I mean, visually, this part looks great. Some of the, um, some of the uh, hotkeys are different by default. Um, in KSP1, scrolling your mouse wheel, I believe moves you up and down. Now it zooms in and out, which honestly is probably more reasonable as a default. There is a way, oh, I guess it's middle click, and then you can sort of just move around over here. Um, color coded, easier for some people. Yeah, 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 no, the, the colors of the, the sizes are fantastic. So let's go and go for our coupler over here. So, is it decouplers or separators that we normally use? I mean, in the end, they'll both do the same thing. I'm trying to remember. I think we use decouplers mostly. Yeah, so this is a little bit weird. So this was um, small for the cockpit, right? Right, small over here for the Mark I tick can. But for some reason, the small decoupler is the size of the top, not the bottom. We have to use medium. Oh, did I pick the uh, did I pick the medium one? Oh yeah, because I was clicking through a bunch of things. Never mind. Shut up. That that, that okay. I forgot that I, I I accidentally clicked on this while trying to I was trying to lock open the dialog box because I thought I was going to be clicking on the favorite star from there. But yeah, all right. Now everything makes a lot of sense. All right, slap that down. That's going to be good. So let's go ahead. Um, apparently reentry heat is not currently modeled now for a um for a basic orbital flight. You usually didn't need a heat shield anyway in Kerbal um, because your reentry speed wasn't that high. 
Uh, so it's not unreasonable that we don't go with a heat shield. Although I suppose just for the sake of completeness, um, heat shields are in the system, but I don't think they're required currently because that's not being modeled um, in the current build. But yeah, so we'll throw that in. We'll go and throw in um, a medium tank for, you know, we can probably get away with just a small one for the, the orbit phase. Unless we screw things up, we'll see. There you go, Terrier there. Again, most of these parts are favorited, but we can look at the category. We can see the parts that are technically available currently. And again, we will start with everything unlocked. Uh, so let's go and get another decoupler, followed by the T-800 tank, and we'll throw a swivel engine under there. Then we're gonna check our staging and see what our total Delta V situation is looking like. Um, so the staging has been developed properly here. If we throw a shoot on top. Yeah, I was gonna say, sometimes it, it goes a little bit funky. I mean, technically, no, we, we wouldn't want this. So we're gonna wanna add a new section on top. Drag it in there. I don't like that you don't actually see the thing that you're dragging as you're dragging it. You just have to like have faith that it's locked in there. You know what? Let me just move my camera. Like, hey Quill, pay attention, there's a new subscriber. What, else, what am I covering over here? You know what? I can probably put it there. That seems okay. Doo -doo -doo. Who's that sub? General Mitchell. I think I missed you earlier. Sorry about that, General Mitch. And just now, we got Karazord. Thanks for the sub. Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. And Hatterson. Hey, hey. Thank you so much. Um, now, we can right-click on these things. We can change things a little bit, like how much fuel we're going to bring, although we're going to want these things filled up. Um, there's no, as far as I can tell, there's no retexturing or anything built in. So that's going to be all right. Sub sounds a bit loud. Okay, we'll, well, we can make some of those. Or something. Maybe I'm just going to bring down the uh, the desktop audio here in um, in OBS for now. As a, as a way to help that out. We'll see. I mean, that one voice one is supposed to be loud because I want to make sure I notice it. Because I hate when I miss... Uh, miss that. Um, okay. So we can take a look at our Delta V in the current configuration, which is about 3,000 meters per second, which is not enough for orbit. Uh, ass assuming the basic numbers haven't really changed in KSP2, um, you're going to want, I mean, to be safe, you go for something like 4,500 Delta V. You don't need that much, but that will give you like lots of extra padding. Um, I think technically you can reach orbit in Kerbal, what, is it 3,600? And usually about 4,000, you're fine unless you screw up your ascent, but we'll look we'll look to overkill it a little bit for safety, right? 3,500, yeah, I think that's about the requirement, but I think we'll, we'll go for like 45, uh, 4,500 just to to be safe. So we're gonna add, uh, we're gonna add a little bit of asparagus staging over here. So we're gonna want some lateral decouplers, some radial decouplers. Uh, the first one over here is interesting. Aerodynamic decoupler, small radial decoupler designed for jets and space planes, slanted and highly streamlined. I don't remember this being in the uh, the previous versions here. It does look super cool, I have to see. I wonder if they act like aerodynamic fins, like would they act as stabilizers for a synth? They were there, I just never used them. Hey Quill, pay attention, there's a new that subscriber. That is really neat, but I think we'll go with the um, this over here. We should be fine probably with, actually we're probably fine with just two extras. So let's do that, especially if we're using on another pair of T-800s, that should be lots. I'll click, I'll click to copy. Um, and let's throw in fuel lines. Hey, we don't have to unlock the tech for that. All right, the staging though is completely borked. There you go, all three engines light first, then we drop the two side ones. Then we decouple and go there. We're now at 4,300 meters per second. I think that's gonna be plenty for us to reach orbit, even if I have a really terrible ascent profile. We'll do that. We'll get in um, some uh, struts. Auto strutting is not uh, in the current build, which to be fair, auto strutting wasn't something added to KSP-1 for a long, long, long time. But you know, when, when in doubt, more struts. All right, so these things should be nice and stable on the side. Everything should hold together. Uh, we got a parachute. We shouldn't need a solar panel. We shouldn't need batteries. We shouldn't need anything like that. Uh, check your staging. Yes, absolutely, but we seem to be okay. We did lose some Delta V by adding some weight over here. Um, wait, this might be, it might be a little tight actually. 
But yeah, do we have safety lights? Now, safety light was a thing that was a mod previously. We do have some, um, we do have some various beams and things like that. We've got light bulbs. I don't know if they'll be rotating light bulbs. But let's go ahead and throw, uh, throw some light bulbs in here. They're like, they're like little nipples. I, we might not, I, I actually don't have a tremendous amount of faith in me being a little out of practice and not maybe not used to some of the KSP2 controls uh, to be able to do a smooth enough ascent. We might not make it to orbit. We'll see. If it ends up suborbital, it comes out suborbital. Okay. Let's, um, what do we name our ship? Most important part of the game. What do we name our ship? I like that it like pre-generated a name, fly safe. Might always be in there. Oh, fins. Yeah, that'll be very useful. Otherwise, we might find ourselves not going to space today. Close this window. Hmm. Sprout one. The Mark one. <laughs> I like, hold on. The Mark Mark one. I like it. I like that a lot. Is it, my understanding is that like, yeah, I don't know. You know what? I'm sure it's fine. Now, I don't see a tab over here. Oh, right over here, Kerbal Manager. Bill, no, obviously we have to start off with uh, Jebediah for our first flight. We just start with a bunch of uh, astronauts here, which, I mean, to be fair, we don't have to pay for our astronauts here. We've got infinite money in the sandbox mode, so um, it may as well do that. Yeah, I've, I've clicked the X here about 30,000 times. I don't know why that window gets stuck. I've, I've seen some um, some visual glitches with the user interface for the staging as well, but that's okay. It's not like staging is an important part of the game. Ahem. Ahem. Yeah, strut through friend. As far as I know, all that is fine. These parts just disappear when you, you undo. At least that's how it worked in KSP1. We'll find out. Maybe disasters are afoot. Let's lunch. All right, I don't need any pointers. Thank you very much. Boop, 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 boop. Boop. All right. I wish we could add a, a splash of color in here. How about these lights? Can I like toggle them on here? There we go, light enabled. Okay, it's doing them both. Advanced controls. <gasps> Blink enabled! Yes! Yes! Blinking lights! Blink faster. Oh, baby! Okay, never mind. I changed my, my previous words. Uh, I now heartily recommend ksp2 it is the greatest game ever we got blinking lights built in ah oh, so happy look at jeb's face he's so happy all right uh sas is on throttle is full i mean let's go we are gonna hit go and it actually does start a six second countdown for us hey. We have launch. Surface speed is past 100 meters per second, so we're going to become starting a roll towards the east over here. We'll talk about the overall UI here in just a scooch. All right. Now, I do get this like weird artifacting as we go through the cloud layers. You see this? Like, I don't know if it's something with the anti-aliasing, but it's something's really weird. Oh my god, you can see the, the lights in the internal camera. Oh, that's funny. Okay, we've drifted a little to the north, maybe? Oh, I think that's staging time. So we're just dive bombing the space center now. Okay, Aplaps' time is climbing rapidly. Wow, we have, we have a lot of thrust right now, which is nice. We can start moving 
quite horizontally over here. So I love that the Apoapsis, the orbital info, is now on the main screen immediately. That is tremendously useful. There was like, most of the reason I would run um, Kerbal Engineer Redux or MechJeb was just, holy crap! We're already hitting like 100 Apoapsis, that was crazy. Okay, clearly I could have gone much more aggressively on my gravity turn here, but everything happened a lot faster. It tends to happen when you're streaming. That's crazy go nuts. We're not in space yet. Space happens at 70k. But yeah. Oh, is that the collision from my... No. That's where I'm expected to make landfall. Okay. <laughs> That's a nice little new graphic. I like that. Drama will happen here. Excellent. So there's not a lot of options in the graphic settings for the anti-aliasing and things, and it might be related to my video card, and there might be other things I can tune, but right now there's not a lot of options. Anyway, we're about to hit 70k. But we're going to be able to circularize with this. So yeah, I didn't have a lot of faith. You know, it was like, let's over-engineer this just in case, which is, you know, is fine. Uh, we can try to plan a maneuver, although we'll be hitting this node pretty soon. We can make a maneuver plan over here, which might be a little tricky. It's probably fine to just do it manually. We can just yoink this out until it looks like circularization is going to happen. There you go. That looks good. Go away, page. What's great is our maneuver planner now tells us when to begin the burn. We don't get a timer for when we hit the node. We get a prediction for when we should start the burn. Now, I suspect that if we're having to stage partway through this, which is going to change our thrust weight ratio, um, the burn timer may or may not be accurate, but there it is. We can uh, go and turn to maneuver node over here. See a little jiggle from the rocket because it's trying to use the uh, rocket gambling to help steer us, but we're not burning right now, so it doesn't do anything. That was all reaction wheel, which is fine. We still have like the nubs from the separator and the struts over here. No, wait, this is the separator. This must be the nubs from the uh, the fuel and that's the strut or the other way around. And cute little nubbins though. Was in KSP before 1.1? which I don't know what people are referring to. The, the new burn timer? Maybe it was added to KSP, the, the improved burn timers. That is possible. Oh, you enable the advanced burn display on the settings. Okay. I think I'm so used to running the uh, better burn time mod or whatever that I stopped looking for it in the regular options. Anyway, we're about to go for burn here as we reach the apoapsis. All right, we are go for circularization burn. Stop burn in. Nice, excellent. And we may be doing a stage part way through. Oh, is this actually, are these the numbers of my stages here? So it is actually figuring that in. Oh, baby. All right, that is pretty impressive. Yeah, we've got a decent little rocket plume going on. I'm not looking at any of my numbers right now. I'm having faith in this. It's interesting because the timer is gone. But we're not circularized. I'm, I, I think I dragged it properly. Huh. Now it just goes to orbital camera mode. There we go. Hmm. I know I had the stage, but I was expecting to run out of fuel here. It actually felt like we got to the end of this timeline somewhere, but I might be wrong. Maybe I, maybe I misinterpreted the timing. Maybe we did run out of fuel like right here or something like that. But in any case, we are in orbit now. Not the most circular of orbits currently. What? Oh, there we go. Like, I, I shouldn't be leaving the system, but I guess it still had the maneuver node in there. And I guess it was thinking, well, if you do the burn again, here's what's gonna happen, which it's whiskey and fair. chocolate. Let's try, um, let's try an EVA. Zinlus Gewildig. Thank you very much, and I apologize if I butchered your name over there. Uh, hey, Quill, finally debt free after years. Oh, wow. Wow. Being able to watch your content for free has always been great help for me while living in poverty, so it's time for me to contribute and thank you. Well, for, I'm very. Congratulations. I'm happy to hear that things are going so well for you. That's great, and thank you very much for the support. Very Dutch username. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> wow. Oh, it ran out just after the staging work. Well, okay, okay, so it, it was there. I think it was just so tight and I'm really bad at like, I don't play rhythm games, you guys. So I probably just, just yeah, missed whiskey them. And Maybe chocolate. that part was completely fine. Do we get more whiskey and chocolate? Esoteric fish, hey, thank you. 
Hey Quill, great to see KSP again. You can paint every part. Oh, so I was wondering about that. I'm pretty sure there was a paint thing. And um, I, I, I was right clicking and I was looking here to see if there was a thing, but I guess there was probably another bouton somewhere. Uh, you can paint every part or set a color scheme. There's a paint palette button in the bottom right middle of the VAB screen. And you can set the RGB. I did notice the colorizing of the lights over here. Yeah. So that I did see. Um, but yeah, okay. I'll, we'll have to look for the uh, the paint tool next time we're in there. Let's try to EVA with Jeb and see how that feels like. And actually, I will read this because if the commands are slightly different, it'll be important. Kerbal's now doing now outside your vehicle. EVA can move them around either on foot by deploying their jetpack. Oh, that's literally it. Okay. So we're going to let go. And okay. So no commands now. So if I hit R for RCS. Okay. Cool. All right. Now, my understanding is that there's even some more buttons than there used to be. We got Q and E for yaw. W and S is still forward and back. A and D is still strapped. I think there's an uh, I think there's an up and down. And yeah, the animation of like deploying the little controls is quite cool. Um, I think there was a pitch forward and pitch back command, or maybe you just it's just that when you point your camera you can't because previously. Oh yeah, I think it's auto following my camera. Previously, I think your Kerbal was always in a... Okay, no, there must be an up and down command. What is it? Does anyone remember? Shift and control. Thank you. Yeah, because that always that already existed. But um, I think what's new is the Kerbal tilting to match the camera. Because I think in KSP1, your Kerbal was always sort of in a fixed orientation, which sometimes made it awkward when you were trying to approach the tin can and like you're just bumping your head about against it instead of uh, before. Yeah, so the Kerbal's immediately turning around as I turn my camera, which is also new, because it used to be you'd turn your camera around. Oh, now he's not. Why is he sometimes and sometimes not? Huh. Because I just a second ago, it's like when I tabbed that tab back in. Oh, there we go. Now he's not doing it. But if I click once and then turn, now he is doing it. Huh. I mean, I can turn off the RCS and then look around as much as I want. But um, turn it back on, please. All right, let's see if we can successfully get back into our pod. Great sun. Plan looks good. I'm getting some weird stripey things. I think there's there's something with the aliasing. And again, it might be specific to my video card or just because we don't have a lot of control over the settings. Um, there might be something weird, but... I think there's some of that nice shine there. The one thing I will say is it's way too dark when you're on the dark side. Things are about to get pitch black. It's a good thing we've got some light on, lights on here. See, look at this. So this would be an example of like, because I think that's the door there. But it's not giving me the option to get in. Still not giving me the option to get in. I mean, can I just hit F? Maybe that's not the door. Oh, that's the hatch here. That was just a window. Okay. So yeah, what's going to happen here after the sun sets? Let me do this. By the way, um, I don't know if anyone else loves to do this, but I, I've always done this in KSP2. So you will see this error come up from me now when I'm warping. You'll see this message. It's because I like to bind. So the X key by default, X is the um, throttle goes to zero button. I like to double bind that so it's also the stop time warp button because that way when I'm doing stuff in this game, I just mash X as my general stop everything freak out button. So I like it quite a lot. So yeah, um, yeah, of course, in real life, it's, it's completely realistic that on the dark side of the planet here, it is very dark, it's completely realistic. Um, in fact, I, I feel like we're getting a little bit more light than we used to potentially because of this. But for streaming and things, it's so dark. So I, uh, back in the day, I would load a mod that would give me more ambient lighting. Then they did add that option to Kerbal, base Kerbal itself to increase some ambient lighting. Although I always preferred, I use a mod called, I think Planet Shine is the one I would well, use to do to some cool driver. lighting things and bump up the ambient lighting just a little bit, recognizing that it's not realistic, but that it was very cool. I have to say, we're gonna we're gonna cover our spaceship with lights though. This new lighting system is amazing. 
It's amazing. Yeah, compression hates this one simple trick. Yeah, vi video encoding codecs really don't like blackness. Like low lighting is really, really hard for them to deal with. Really, really hard. Um, so it ends up looking like butt on streams or in recordings. Um, plus just, you know, for people watching, like visually it's a little better if it's a little bit more light. So hopefully we can get an ambient lighting little slider. Uh, but yeah, I guess the sky is great. Love seeing the mun over there. Okay, let's see if we can land without dying. We do have some extra buttons here. I think, oh, that's our brakes. Gear deploy, solar panel deploy. It's nice that those buttons are there. We got our abort. Um, I think that this looks very cool and kind of realistic. It might be a little on the no noisy side over here, just visually. Um, we'll see what happens, you know, how will you get used to it or not? Um, some people think it's too noisy. Some think people think it's too big. For some people, it might be like, it might be just in the Goldilocks zone and be just exactly perfect and like really great to use. Um, so, you know, your mileage may vary uh, when we'll see what happens there uh, in terms of, ooh, this is spinning very fast. I'm just gonna go ahead and time warp to the brighter side for our landing because it'll look better. See, that says time warp limited due to proximity. It's like, maybe it was continuing to try to accelerate the time warp. I didn't do that manually, right? I just clicked to set a warp point. Maybe it was trying to go faster. You see, I'm getting, like, you see some weird artifacting here? Again, it just might be my video card. I wonder what happens if I turn off my, um, my anti-aliasing. Hopefully it doesn't need a restart. It might need a restart. It's, it's like, I don't know how much it's translating on screen, but it looks like there's some in the clouds here and on the edge of the spaceships, there's definitely some weird artifacts. But uh, it'll be interesting to see if other people get that. Um, if it's and if they do, is it everyone? Is it everyone with AMD cards? Something like that. Turn off V-Sync. That's not a V-Sync thing. Got worse when you switched it off. I wonder if uh, we can try turning off. I mean, ant anisotropic filtering is normally very good, but yeah, I'm not seeing any change there. It doesn't get rid of it. That's not what I want to change. So we'll go ahead and re-enable this. So yeah, I think with the anti-aliasing on, it's a little bit better on the ship, but it's still present, but it's still there in these clouds. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, people compare and contrast depending on their system. So we'll see. And you can see currently the graphic menu is very bare bones. I might be able to use, um, I'm new to uh, AMD cards. I mean, I had one like 15 years ago, a long time ago, uh, but mostly I've been in NVIDIA for a long time. Um, so I don't know what like the control panel settings are specific for that, like outside of the game. Maybe there's some tuning I could do. Anyway, let's, uh, let's land here. So we're going to lock retrograde and it'll be a pretty short burn, I think. Uh, to deorbit, we'll go for a periapsis of, I don't know, like 20, okay, 14k. Overshot at some. That's fine. Our orbital speed's pretty low. We shouldn't have any problems here. Uh, everything's looking pretty good. Let's do, uh, I, I, what I like to do a lot is go to, um, radial or anti-radial. And then drop my engine that way. It just makes me feel a little bit safer. It's funny, look at our little, uh, whiskey needle over here. Being kind of confused about things. Alright, let's go for stage. Now, one thing I want to check, and this might work out badly, but I kind of want to stage the parachute now. Um, because by default, it's like, or do we just click here and armed? Like if I hit deploy, does that actually arm it? Or does it deploy it? I think it arms it. Yeah, we could quick save first. Good point. I don't know if there's a quick save hotkey. But let's just go ahead and do a, do a little save here and see what happens. If I hit spacebar. Okay, I think, I mean, it clearly, yeah, it flipped over to armed, which is great. And I think KSP-1 mostly does. I was always really paranoid about like manually staging my parachutes when it was safe. But in theory, it's going to be okay. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, time warp here for re-entry. And it's no longer, it doesn't, it no longer separates time, like pure time warp from physics warping. 
in terms of the UI. So what it's done here is it's changed us from the, I don't know what I was going, times eight or whatever time warp speed I was going to, to times four, although we are now in a physics warp and I can input commands and things. You could see it wasn't rotating the ship. So mechanically, it still has the physics warp versus pure time warp, um, but it kind of combines it together in the UI, which I think is probably much less confusing for people. Um, I'm curious if there's still gonna be ways to like force one mode versus the other when you want it. Will also be interesting to see when the parachute deploys. So currently it's got this sort of cyan uh, bluish highlight over there, which I'm assuming is their armed status. Yeah, the, the blinking lights coming in through the pod is interesting. So it must be it must not be like self-shadowing. Um, is there still a mode to see first person? I go and kill the throttle. If, can I hit C to change camera modes? No, I cannot. Not yet, okay. There's no internal view yet. Mountains look good. We are getting like, you get a little bit of like pop in from the terrain I've noticed. I mean, to be fair, you get that in Spikes Fall Flight Simulator too. Ain't no part of like space party. <laughs> Turn on those strobes. All right, let's go do the time warp again. Oh, there you go. So the Shoot has deployed in uh, in sort of like pre-deploy mode, drogue mode or whatever over here. I like seeing the little clamps open up. So this is going to start to slow us a little bit more. Going to 800 meters per second and slowing. And you can see, yeah, we had no re-entry like visual effects, but also I think like the heat just literally mechanically does not work in the current build. Um, so you can go and like, that's a dangerous spot for that X to be right on top of the EVA button. <laughs> if I had misclicked one too many times, which God knows I'm liable to do, uh, we might have ejected Jebediah there in a real bad way. Mm -hmm. All right, we can uh, go back to time warping over here. And yeah, so when I was playing on my 1080, during this stage here, during the re-entry that we were seeing, uh, my frame rate when, when I was looking down at the ground was dipping down to like, like I think single digits. So like, yep, I need a new computer. It was playable on my 1080, but it weren't good. It weren't good at all. Cloud on this side is really beautiful. I mean, yeah, visually there's a huge upgrade over vanilla. Even for, there's a lot of great, brilliant, beautiful visual mods for KSB1. Um, and they bring some things to the party that KSP2 might not even have actually. But even with a lot of the KSP visual mods, there's a bunch of things that are in KSP2 that we just didn't have. So yeah, again, again it feel, it's very early access, very sort of tech demo-y feel kind of vibe of things. And so a lot of this is gonna come down to uh, how quickly can the devs bang out, you know, some updates uh, going forward. But I think this has a lot of promise. Apparently you can jump out early and use your yoke controls to land. Boop! Oh, suddenly some grass. Ah, oh, when you successfully land or to splash down, you can recover your vessel here. This is here. I don't know if it's pointing to anything. When you recover your vehicle, your vehicle will be recycled and your crew return. <laughs> your crew will be recycled. And your, your crew will be returned to KSC for the next mission. Um, I don't remember where I saw, there was a recovery button, but I don't remember where it is. And in fact, I thought it was like really weird. I couldn't manage it until I EVA'd and went back in. Because if I EVA, <laughs> Mark 1-1 one, one is on a crash trajectory. Mm, no, I think we're fine. Whee! Da da da. One small step for Jared Jebediah. One giant leap for Kerbal Kind. Bonk. Oh, nice little animation for grabbing the flag. I like that. Boop. Get a. Um. Oh, there it is. Board. Thank you for not doing that during the scent. <laughs> <laughs> Kerbal King, thank you very much. 
Stupid Work says I can't watch live. Oh, catch you tomorrow. Oh man, thank you very much, Kerbal King. Ooh, so dinner's sorted. That's great. So there's the recovery. Yeah, it's a little weird that's not on the main UI. So it's like, I'm used to like, you go to the top and you get the little pull down for your recovery, but recover Wessel. Yeah, the, um, the grass texture sheets here, something's wrong with them. I think it's fair to say that this is not, um, like the designers looked at this and said, yep, that's grass. It's real good. I think there's something wrong with them. And again, it might be related to my specific video card. We don't know. There we are. Very good. Jeb is proud of you. Well, I... I mean, Jeb flew. I wonder if it always says that or if it's like one of the random messages or if it's specifically based on what pilot you chose. Uh, so I guess. Um, huh. So it would let me go to the tracking station. Normally it would go to the KSC, although to be honest, the KSC screen's not that useful. Should actually take a look at the tracking station. Not that there's anything to track right now. Is there still a Mark 1 somewhere? No, it was just highlighting it. Okay. We're good. And look, oh, no, we're back here. Oh, is it marking the flag? Something's going weird there, but okay. Do, 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 do. Probably the distant uh, level of detail grass. Yeah, maybe something like that. Okay, should we try to moon it up? That's either wrong UV channel set in the shader, wrong texture assigned. Yeah. Uh, Vabbit. Let's vab. So, how do we do? Someone said try a plane. I guess there's no um, there's no runway anymore, is there? Uh, although there was an option somewhere to like choose. So this is gonna choose where we're launching from by default. But I guess there's no separate VAB for constructing because I know there was a runway. But normally, when you're making a space plane, you go into a different mode. Um, but I guess it's all built in here. Button bottom left. Well, I mean, there's a plane here, but that's center of pressure. Oh, I do like the... Uh... Oh, wow. Can we go blue because it's like a blueprint mode? If we place things down? Last one left. Oh! Work... Oh, workspace orientation! Okay, cool. That's groovy. So, I mean, we could... Uh, uh, do we plane it or do we try to go to the moon? Do we have a space base like in cockpit? Because none of these... Oh, scroll down. Moon then plane. Plane under the bridge. I mean, planes are a great way to kill Kerbals. That is a sexy freaking cockpit. Holy cow. That looks fantastic. Hang on, let's, let me do a short little flight here. Um, I do like how these are like separated into like the different fuel categories, which is really good. Uh, presumably, so methalox I'm assuming is the methane plus oxygen. So for our space plane, all we need is, I guess, methane. Well, it's not gonna be a space plane. It's just gonna be a plane. I mean, mostly it's gonna be something that like smushes itself i'm sure <laughs> goliath let's do a short hey, you know what I keep shift clicking to copy i can't remember is it shift click in the old one is that why i'm doing it or is this because i've been playing too much um against the storm where shift is the the copy kind of vibe Very early sort of rocket plane looking thing. Um, control surfaces. Do these wings, the, the wings must have built-in control surfaces on them. There we go, now we're getting our procedural. Excellent. specify but it looks like it's got little control services um 
Uh, I'm doing this real quick. Hold on, I need an air intake still. Which we'll just put a little... Oh, what's with the pink missing texture kind of vibe? Oh, there it is. Turn mirror mode on and... Wow. I mean, really, the air, the scoop should be on the bottom, typically, but it might get in a little way. Can I procedural this? Can I make this smaller? No, I think it's just those two wings. Can be. It's weird that's leaving those icons on there, but... Yeah, now this has come back. There's some s slightly odd thing. They show the wing option? Yeah, so over here, there's procedural wing. I haven't, I didn't change these wings. I just changed the, uh, the tail. But yeah. Get rid of a whole mod that way. Um, where's ground? I don't think that's going to be big enough here. Uh, hit C. Yeah, that's not going to be big enough. To give us the space we need. Um. Okay, that was weird. Oh, I think it was flipping into um, radial symmetry instead of mirror symmetry. We'll check center mass and stuff soon. that bloop why are you being so hard to place you know what I'm realizing I'm using the wrong wheel I it's like a steering wheel that I'm trying to do but okay it'll be a little bit nose down and landing what I think I'm gonna do okay how do we go that's not what I want to do. Um, how do I get the movement mode? Is that still a thing? As opposed to the picker. Yeah, there it is. Rotate and translate. I want to be able to select these and just scrooch them up a notch. Oh, I lost my thing. Hold on. Undo. Undo. Oh, redo. Shit. I don't think there's... Oh, no. There it is. Did I never place it? That's fine. Okay, where's our center of mass? And I guess center of pressure is a center of lift. We normally want our center of mass just in front of the center of lift, right? I think I'm, I'm remembering that correctly. So what we kind of want to do here is actually just yoink the wing. Well, I guess it doesn't update in real time. Okay. And change it, you go through radial symmetry from one X to then you go to mirror. Hmm. So it looks to me the center of lift is just barely ahead of the center of mass. I might want it. Yeah. Because you want you want the plane to naturally sort of nose down a little. Center of lift doesn't update. Yeah. Well, it's it doesn't update until after I let go. So we I think we're okay now. That's okay. It's fine. Kerbal space per planes have a singular purpose. That purpose is to kill Kerbals. That's like 95% of what they do is kill Kerbals. So let's see what happens. Totally fine jet plane. I'm sure this is okay. What do you mean I'm overriding? Why does it still think this is called the fly safe? Oh yeah, how do we paint? <clears throat> Red ones go faster. 
That is agency colors. Ah! Oh, ho, 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 ho. oh, 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 that's going to be fun. Oh, man. All right. You see, it opens up this thing. It's like, I don't know. Something odd. That's fine. All right, let's just launch this. Oh, we should choose who we're going to kill. Um, One of the new ones. Rorod. Congratulations. You're almost certainly going to die. All right. SAS on. Thrusters to full. Weird, spacebar didn't actually stage. I had to click. Whoa! I'm not touching anything! <laughs> There's something wrong with my wheels? <laughs> what? Hang on, if I remember to launch... What? Now, sometimes that could happen if your, um, if your landing gear was too small for the weight of the plane. The wheels are tilted inwards. Uh, they are, aren't they? Well, we haven't killed Rorod yet, so this is clearly unacceptable. It might be the front wheel traction as well. Yeah. Let me fix the alignment. Yeah, didn't kill the Kerbal, failed design, exactly. Tasks failed unsuccessfully. It's gonna be hard to spot. Yeah, there's definitely a little uh, engine toad. Is this aligned? That looks aligned. Okay, we can always I'm um, presumably tweak the traction and stuff on the uh, runway for now. Hey, in that screenshot, that's basically what I just built. Okay, so if I hit go again. I mean, we definitely saw the SAS trying to do something. Maybe I should just leave it off. I don't think they're facing outwards. I think they're okay. I mean, it would be nice if there was an aligned kind of thing there. And maybe there is, and I'm just not finding it. Um, let me turn off the SAS as well. Yeah, Space Mars not um not launching here. Why is that? Maybe I should use a bigger front wheel. Alright, we'll, we'll try with the friction totally turn off on the front wheel, because people keep asking about it. We'll see. I barely did anything. It, the drift to the left wasn't me. I actually tapped to the right, I think, a couple of times. Maybe I'm wrong. But I think it's, it's just going off on its own. All right, here, here what? we'll try it with no friction. Maybe we should turn off steering control off the back wheels. They still look like they're facing out. I don't know. I mean, it's hard to tell because we get like the fisheye camera kind of vibe. I mean, there might be something going on with the rear. Maybe we'll just reinstall the things, but let's see what happens. We'll do the launch with no front wheel friction, which I realize that is something you kind of had to mess with a little bit in uh, KSV-1. Oh, turn off SAS. Now see, it's going, it's drifting. Oh, I can sort of, rec you know what? Just try to pull up. Just try to pull up. No, up. Oh my god! No, it's fine! It's fine, we got this! We got this! 
We got this. <laughs> okay. Let me let me rip all the uh, we, the landing gear off. Um, and reinstall it. Tail fin isn't centered. How come none of this centered? Are you sure? It looks. It looks kind of centered to me. I mean, it was on snap mode, so. Now, wheels are always a little bit annoying to install. Um, because they, they do have a weird snap behavior. Because, okay, so if I do this, we've got mirrored. You can see with, like, snap mode on, they want to do that. I can go wider with these for a little more stability, theoretically, although. It's like, at what point does it, like, well, that's not really how planes go, but sure, let's pretend. Um, with no mirroring, I'll put a medium gear on there. And then what we'll do is we'll just bring it up inside the plane. I do. There you go. Hold shift. I think we should still have a bit of an up tilt. No, maybe a little too much still. They don't want it to face down on the runaway. That's kind of maybe levelish. Okay. It does feel like... No, don't do that. Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. It does feel like the rear wheels shouldn't do any steering. Okay, it sticks out a little bit now, but that's fine. The clipping into the flaps and things should never be a problem in Kerbal. They don't really care about that shit. Yeah, we'll move the center of lift a little further back as well. Okay. I don't know if I have to, like, save it every time, but... I'm paranoid about that, so let's give this another try. <clears throat> yeah, it might be different in this. In this, You're really right about that. Ooh. Goodbye, son. That's not entirely what I want to fly, but sure. Still don't know why the space bar doesn't stage there. I'm turning off SAS. I don't trust it. I'm not inputting any controls right now. Um, maybe there's something with the suspension. <laughs> it's just really eager to get in. Oh my god, it just it just auto took off. Okay, now I'm starting to steer. Nope. Oh, that that landing was a little bumpy. All right. Okay, SAS back on. Hello, everyone. Ooh, the transition to night does not look good. The shadows are way too harsh. It's possible the um the the PID controller for the SAS needs to be tweaked a little. Look at this flapping. <laughs> yeah, that might be part of it. All right, we have successfully... Look, it looks like snow now with the shine. I think there's, like, too much gloss on the landscape. Control surfaces are pretty big for the small plane, yeah. Now, I don't think that was part of the programmable uh, procedural design is the size of control surfaces. I want to, where's my G-meter? Okay, it's fine. Music is good. Plane looks awesome. For something we, we just like randomly threw together without any real calculation. Except for the, and the, the the landing gear thing. Always an issue in Kerbal. There's always some really weird behavior with the landing gears. I think switching to the medium gear in front was actually quite good. Permission to buzz the tower. Negative Ghost Rider. The pattern is full. Cool. OK. 
Okay. Get a little bit of altitude. Try for a loop. I like that we're, we're, we're increasing our speed while ascending. Yeah, see, it's got this, this artifact around these edges. Now, it does just seem to be in atmosphere. I think it has something to do with, like, the, the fog sort of haze effect. Oh, is there a key to hide the UI? Oh my god, the game's not paused. The game is not paused when I go into a menu. I wanted to hide the UI and take a picture of climbing into the sunshine. I love the, um... What are these? They're not contrails. Well, they sort of are. It's like, so it's the pressure over the wings lead to um, the vapor condensing into like little micro clouds over here. I mean, I know we can pause the game. Like, I realize that. I don't know why it puts it up multiple times. I've seen that with other people. I think it's like reading the input on like multiple frames. Um, so we could pause. It's just a little weird that like when you go into the menu, it doesn't do that. Yeah, I wonder if there is a hide user interface. Because there was an... Oh, there we go. F5 and F9 still works with the quick save. Okay. I'll have to remember that. See, so toggle pause menu, hit escape, except it clearly doesn't pause, which is funny. And I don't see... Oh, wait, is that F2? Did people spot that? Toggle flight HUD. Hey! All right. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm not technically running it through Steam, so I guess I don't have my F12 button for screenshots. And F12, in any case, leads to a UI thing. Uh, Windows print screen. I don't know if that took a screenshot like it normally did. I'm I'm new to Windows 11, so some of the buttons are different. I can Control Shift S to get like snap. The snipping tool. Yeah, that actually is a kind of a nice shot. I mean, it's not Microsoft Flight Simulator, which I absolutely adore, and I take screenshots in that constantly, but it's not bad. See, it, that pop up multiple times is a little weird. Okay. Oh, does it actually leave a little twisty trail behind us? Look at that. Look at that. All right, time to do the small, the hardest thing there is to do in aviation: attempt to land without dying. At this point, landing on the runway, I'm going to consider that to be totally optional. Woo! The maneuverability starts to get a little wobbly as the speed drops. The runway's in a different position as well, because in KSP-1, the runway... Well, I guess there are multiple runways. I guess I did take off from one left of all these towers. All these multiple runways and launch pads are going to be great when multiplayer gets added. Oh, careful with quick caves. Heard other creators say they aren't working. Okay. I mean, this looks like a runway to me. I don't know where the, uh, where, where are the pappy lights? Or runway lights in general. I'm looking for my two white, two red. I'm seeing some blinking over there, but that just might be artifacting. I did take off from these? Okay. Use mouse and keyboard? Yeah. A Kerbal, um, Kerbal 2, I don't know, might have, might, might have support for, uh, for joysticks. I'm not sure. Is the runway in the middle of this or are they two side by sides? I think they're two side by side runways. All right, deploy landing gear. Landing gear locked. We don't have flaps. So let's pretend we're configured for a landing. Let's attempt the uh, right runway over here. Nope. 
Oh my god. Oh my god, when you- the speed goes- okay, I'm well below whatever landing speed is configured for this plane. Because I lost all control authority there for a second. Everything. I'm doing sort of a crab landing like it was a high wind situation. Fine. Ooh, that's some G-force! Oh, I can't roll! It's not- it- oh! Okay, this plane cannot be controlled at low speeds. At all. It just- it just turns into like a ballistic object. But somehow he lives. <laughs> Any landing you can walk away from, right? Okay, uh, let's recover what's left of the vehicle. Yeah, it is weird here that the, the shortcut is to the tracking station in that UI. And then it just pops you back to like where your camera was. I mean, I guess once it's recovered, it's recovered and then it can go wherever. A little strange. No, I don't. I, no, I don't want to revert. There we go. <clears throat> You're right. It was a failure because he lived. Okay, let's try to go to the moon. Um. So, yeah, we'll start. We'll just do like Mark. One. Oh, it remembers the colors. Oh. oh. Interesting. Assembly parts. Okay. So yeah, we're doing the entire assembly right now, or we can paint part by part. But I don't know. The red color is cool, man. Big orange tank. You're right. We'll stuff the color of the uh, the big orange tank. I do like the bare metal too. It was actually a pretty decent look. Okay. So let's pretend that there is um, reentry heat, and throw that on. And then we're gonna want to shoot on top. Okay. Then we're going to go and get our separators. So this is going to be the bit that lands on the MUN and then takes off again. Uh, or we could, I mean, we could go for um, um, Min Miss, which requires like much less hardware. But no, we'll go for the MUN. So, okay, so the hatch is offset. The window is centered, but the hatch is offset. Part of me is wondering about, um... Like some radially mounted engines? There's not a lot of options. But for the actual landing? Can we get thrust to weight ratio? As a stat. Yeah, now, 0.243, if we swap to the moon, this should be, um, this should be lift. I don't know if it's enough. It's probably too much fuel. Well, it depends. So, yeah, right now it's 2,000 meters per second. Um, yeah, for return from the moon, is it 800 from the surface of the moon to return? Well, we can use the trip planner, uh, which is kind of interesting. I don't know. There we go. Moon. So, there you go. I love this. Hey, Mocker, thank you very much. What's that? Good news, we're landing shortly. Bad news, we're crash landing. It's just typical. I love the breakdown as well for the trip planner. This, you normally have to go to like a separate website to get this information over here. Uh, round trip, there we go. So from the surface, now we can ignore this step here because this counts like Kerbin low orbit. We don't have to get back into Kerbin low orbit. Where this is moon intercept the second time. But presumably this is to get to sort of space from the moon. And then this is how much we need to get into orbit from the moon. This is very, this is, huh. I'm not getting on that. Yeah, this is actually not a very helpful set of numbers. But mostly I think we can just drop this. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe I need 800 from moon orbit to get back. Maybe that's the number I'm remembering. 
800 to get from the moon's surface into moon orbit, another 800 to get back? Maybe. So this stage here, which if it also includes landing, kind of needs that much. Yeah, I don't know, this doesn't sound, it, they did just mirror it. it. This doesn't sound right at all, does it? What do we normally need for like a trip to the moon? Is it like 6,500? Delta V, is that normally what we targeted like in total? Yeah, but I mean, we need we need enough Delta V to break moon orbit to return to Kerbin. But yeah, then, I mean, this whole last bit, it's all arrow breaking in return, so we can drop that. 6,500 or is that more like min mist? Do we need 8,000? More like 7.8K? We can't ask for moon to Kerbin. Because you can only ask from, from Kerbin, no matter what. Yeah, so we can probably take this number and drop off at least at least maybe 4000 from from this estimate. Okay. Um so we might just have to like make some educated guesses over here. Uh what does it look like deployed? All right. Oh, no. Bum, bum, bum. <clears throat> Smash in the Kerbin Apollo style. You don't have to need the 3400 at all. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, that last part we can definitely ignore. Okay. So, that's sort of our lander thing. Uh, this st stage over here might cover our transmooner injection phase. I gotta say, the little stars, even if I don't use the favorite menu, the stars are really helpful to like highlight the things I'm looking for most of the time anyway. Like when I'm looking for the, the terrier over here, like that. Um, I was gonna say, we're gonna have to fix the staging because this is obviously, like, wh what happened here? Why, why are you combining these together? That's not what I want. Nobody wants that, come on. Uh, we're gonna take that, move you over here. There we go. That is a little bit more sensible. Good, okay. You know what I might want to do? Can you remove from staging? Oh. Oh, that was a heat shield. PD. No, it looks like I can't remove it from the staging. Because I like to do that, so when I'm, when I'm launching here, I don't accidentally double tap and pop this stage. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's a little unfortunate. Anyway, that's probably lots for our transmuter injection phase. I, I suspect. I don't know if that's true, but let's assume that it is. And move on. So now we're going to want to do our uh, launch and orbit around Kerbin. Delta V. Yeah, I mean, the Terrier obviously is, is, yeah, is crap for that. So our total Delta V, I mean, it's, I'm wondering if it's assuming like the perfect situation, like in a vacuum and things for these various stages. I want to sort of have to hope that that's the case. Um, I'm going to do a two-step asparagusing. I want asparagus now. Delicious. And it makes your pee smell funny. So, you know, what's not to love, right? Copy you over there. Uh, throw a nose cone. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll copy now. Do that. As I, I think it might vary for people, but for a lot of people, it's like within a half an hour. Asparagus will make your pee smell really funny. Okay, all the engine. What at the bottom? Yeah, there's something about the... Um, the staging interface feels, it just feels less than great. There we go. So you are the first to break. So you, and it might just be me because I'm, you know, an old man and clicking things is hard, but you're going to flow into that. 
you're gonna flow into the central tank. All right, let's get some struts up on this bad boy. Putin is here. Thank you very much. Go and grab that. And, uh, scooch. We'll have to we'll have to eat something on the way to the moon. Okay, hopefully that's enough strutting. I don't know. More space tape, right? When in doubt. We're not doing docking. Go away, engineer. Um, how is it saying only this much? Delta V. That seems wrong. So either I did something wrong or it's calculating something super wrong. So all five engines are lit. Yep. Then we drop these two, which are flowing their fuel the quickest into the others. Then we drop the other two. Then at some point we stage and switch, and presumably we're in space at that point. It's just a little. Wow, that's interesting. Why is it not showing fuel for these? I mean, unless there's something obvious I'm forgetting, this feels like it should be a crazy amount of fuel in Delta V, as opposed to just barely enough to reach orbit. These things are full of fuel. And we've got the fuel things. They should be going the right way. Yeah, I'm thinking it might not be able to calculate for fuel flow. I think we're going to have to assume that this is incorrect, but I don't know. Um, let's get some solar panels. And oh, yeah, so the problem here is Based on the orientation that I normally build things in, it's not going to work with the alignment of the pod for a ladder. Although, we should be able to RCS up here. We should be able to RCS up to that. So in theory, we don't need a ladder. Hey Quill, pay attention, there's a new subscriber. I mean, what could possibly go wrong, right? Hey Finkel, thanks for the sub. But I could make our life a little easier, I suppose. If I grab this and give you... Uh, how do I not 90 degree rotation? Can I do like a 45 degree rotation? Okay, what I can this thing can do is I can take the rotate and translate. Click here. And... Do something like that. There we go. And then assuming that ladders and parachutes are a thing... Ladders. Just throw some extra ladder. It'll just give us a bigger area to latch onto when we RCS. We don't need to go from the ground because we should be able to lift ourselves off the ground with RCS with our jetpack. Unless something has changed, in which case, someone is doomed on the moon. But that's par for the course. <clears throat> oh yeah, I wonder if Shift Q and E would have done small, small amounts. Because I know holding Shift when you're using the translation tools lets you do fine controls, but I don't know about when you're doing Q and E for the rotation. Oh yeah, Ava can totally take some of the percent. That's fine. Yeah, now it's time for some safety lights. Now, I did like this. But, navigation lights. You know, we definitely are going to want some lights facing downwards. I wonder if this actually illuminates in a direction. Or if we should get, like, some spotlights. We get light strips. <gasps> Hold on. Hold on. We're obviously going to have some light strips on this bad boy. For sure. That's going to look hype. This is going to make up for all the RGBs I didn't plug in in my new computer case. Like, so I've got so many unconnected wires on my case because they all go to like various RGB lighting modules for my computer. I'm like, I'm not plugging any of these things in. I don't need that shit. Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. Enabled. 
Should we do different colors for each one? Which means I'd actually have to break the symmetry and hand place them all. Oh, so the emission, I guess that's like the self-lighting part. Oh, that's interesting. I'm just going to turn them on. Those will be just be some white strips. It's going to be okay. We can always tweak them as we go. Um, let's, for our landing... Oh, these are huge. Okay, that's not bad. Narrow beam spotlight. Um, it looks like I'm looking for two symmetry here. Oh, there we go. Oh, I was doing double symmetry on the other object and sort of glitching. I'm just going to put them here. Go into rotation mode. And misclick. Come on, grab that. There you go. And face downwards. I want a little bit of lighting pointing down as we're coming in for our landing. All right, I like this. Calculating dragon modes, those lights. I don't know. In Kerbal Space Program 1, the lights were not physics enabled. So they didn't uh, generate drag or anything like that. So we'll see. Just the first disco shrimp in space. I love that. Any more blips and bloops? I don't know. New computer. I don't know what's making those background sounds. All right. I, I do like disco shrimp, though. See, why does it think there's already one? There's not one. That is there. Wait, is the workspace file name? Because it did just eliminate my plane. Oh. Okay. So, I mean, would my workspace be the Disco Shrimp workspace? With multiple models underneath it? I'll figure it out after. I, I, you know what? I think it's time to uh, light this candle, as they say. Um, hang on, there was a button somewhere for the support. Assembly anchor? Ooh. What? Is this just like the vehicle route? Because I was gonna go put the um, hey, these clamps. Yeah, I don't I don't know what those things are doing. Feels like this is too close. I need to be able to extend this. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure we won't just hit the tower and die right away. We're probably okay. When you click the green flag above the ship in the workspace you want to launch. Hmm. Okay. Now it makes sense that it's overriding something. Huh. The screen freeze seems to be okay for me. Yeah, right now there's only uh, there's only sandbox mode. No no money, no career mode. All right, let's let's launch it. What could possibly go wrong? You can build all your moon rockets from build space. Yeah, maybe. All right, SAS turn on. Throttles to full. Staging seems to be good. Oh yeah, no fins. <laughs> Although, for the first bits, when we're launching with all five um, gimbling engines, we probably have enough control authority from just that. But I'm a little concerned about what happens when we get down to just the one final engine over here. So I think it's fair to bring up the maybe we should put in some stabilizers. 
on this little middle dart. I think I think that's fair. I don't know if I have to save again. I haven't, I'll figure out the save system. I, I just, it's probably an improvement, actually. The old save system was pretty wonky to build. With. Okay, so again, for all the fool, SAS is on. We presumably didn't just break the staging. Bill Kerman is ready to go to the moon. Space bar. Okay, at some point, my space bar stopped being my... Did I lock the staging accidentally somewhere? Also, hang on. Ooh, no, shrink down. No, okay. Yeah, I don't want to detach from the tower before the engines are on. That would have been poor. Activate next page. Space is definitely there. Huh. I don't know why it's complaining about the fuel. It really thinks these have zero fuel in them. Hang on. Okay, if I hit go. Nope, they're definitely lit. Okay, now it's updating. That's probably why the um, the delta V calculations were wrong, though. All right, our gravity turn. So what we're looking for here is we want our apoapsis timer to climb until it's about 50. Plus or minus. Whoa, 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 No, 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 no. It locked the prograde for a sec. I mean, the fins are control. Oh no, it's still. It can't hold a uh, prograde here. Okay, we're going to get ourselves a little bit more vertical speed before we start the gravity turn. We're a bit of a beefier rocket here. No, we did add fins. I mean, we don't have much, but we do have some. We just added, like literally, were people not watching? Like, we just reverted a second ago to do that. Still don't know why. Oh, I reverted my staging, which isn't ideal. But I'll just be a little bit more Okay, our thrust to weight ratio is crazy right now. Just be a little slower with the gravity turn. Oh! Okay, maybe we put some bigger fins on this. Plus, it'll give me a chance to actually lock in the stage fix. So we confirmed the stage was fine, but I hadn't noticed the uh, the stage that was added for the uh, support entry. Yeah, so it's very important that that goes there. Yeah, I keep I'm used to the KSB one controls. So are these procedural? We just lost our um, symmetry on that. It's got the little um, button as if it is, but it it doesn't. I don't think it is. Also, I can't click on you again. Why can't I click on the fins? Something is uh, something is glitched here. I can't select the fins anymore. Oh, there you go. Oh, maybe I couldn't select them because I'm in procedural mode and this was hiding. So we're going to go and embiggen these. A fair bit. If I close this, can I reselectable again? Because I want to be able to move you up, my friend. There we are. Okay. Hopefully that'll give us more stability. These are still not control services, but they shouldn't need to be. Spacebar still doesn't work. The Delta V numbers went down. Oh yeah, and I still, yeah, I can't spacebar. Now our Delta V numbers are going up. 
also don't like how wobbly we are. When we're at full throttle, we can't control this thing. That's kind of messed up. The SAS can't even keep us on prograde here. Is there some sort of like, is there some sort of steering logic that's inverted or backwards? There you go, it's locked back on there, which at least is something. Uh, we're not going in the direction that we'd like to. It still thinks... Maybe it's calculating the, um, the Delta V based on if we were... and a lot of our engines are bad in the atmosphere. Or there's something that's not staged correctly up here. Which seems fairly reasonable at this point. Yeah, I'm not sure there's enough Delta B. Hey, I thought I had my lights... Uh... Enabled by default. Yeah, they are enabled. Why is this not... Why are my lights not on? Guys! Spotlights work. Oh! This one works. Why is that one so dark? That one works. Is this light, like, painted black? I think the Kerbals may have painted over this light. Is it inside the hull? No, it clearly sticks out. Maybe it's pointing the wrong way. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm not sure there's going to be enough DLTV for the return trip, but that's okay. We'll get Bill to the moon and totally we'll bring him back later. I'm sure we will. All right, let's just lock on prograde. We don't need a maneuver for circularization. We're gonna be fine. What you can do is if you watch the app WAPSIS timer, if you start the burn, if the time number goes up, it's you started your burn too soon. There you go. So it's not going up. So we did not start our burn too soon. Hopefully we didn't start it too late. Yeah, we're not gonna have enough fuel for this, but you know, it's fine. I'm pretty sure the rocket design that we have going here, we would have been very happy with in KSP-1. So I have, I have the Confuse. We could just try to, well, we could try to cheese it by, um... by adding some reaction wheels. Okay, this, this circularization is being ridiculously expensive. I mean, I had a shit ascent profile, admittedly. People found a beautiful bug where they take the entire space center with them. What? People keep saying that I'm using methane engines. But this is just this is just the terrier. It's all methalox. Or is, are the spiders different? Yeah, okay, we're not gonna be able to get there. Yeah, it's just methalox. It's it's totally fine. Yeah, methane oxygen. I mean that's just it's just the normal default engines. Hmm, okay. 
That's, we're not, definitely not going to be enough here. Um, what can we do? I mean, maybe, I mean, maybe some of the numbers are balanced differently. That's possible. But we knew, I guess this Delta V calculation may have been accurate, but I still don't understand why it's so low. And, and we need it to like be more stable. I might just like have to put some control fins on our outer little pods too, even though that looks stupid. Oh. Oh, I clicked on wings, not stabilizers. I mean, that's... Shouldn't be... I'm thinking about putting in some more um, reaction wheels just to try to cheese the stability. But yeah, we didn't have this kind of instability. Uh, and yet, why is that one light not working? Look at that! Oh! There is literally a ridge on this fuel tank and we just, by coincidence, aligned with it. There's an actual ridge on the fuel tank itself. Oh, all right. So those are good. I mean, when in doubt, we'll just add... I mean, our thrust to weight ratio is clearly great, so we can obviously support more of that. What is our... Where's the engineer report? Two, oh my god. Okay, yeah, we have a crazy amount. Now, as long as this doesn't self-collide. Wait, is this not updating? Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, the, the thrust weight... ...is nuts. That's not mirroring. The symmetry system is broken too. See, how is this 5k delta V? Ah, it's insane. It doesn't make sense. Is something heavier than it was in KSP1? The fuel seems to be kind of the same on the base. It's, it's something to do with, um... I don't know. I know it wasn't named methane in KSP-1. That's weird. Alright, let's leave this stage the same. Um, do they have a, uh... Do they have adapters to go to different sizes? I'm gonna make something very Saturn V looking. Um, how much thrust to weight does this have on a medium engine? Yeah, crazy amount. Now the Delta V is getting high. I don't know. Maybe the dynamics of asparagusing is just wildly different than it used to be. Because now all of a sudden our Delta V numbers are going up. Although still nowhere what I would expect. So yeah, this behavior is fine in a vacuum. Maybe we will do an intermediate stage over here. So we're not carrying all the weight the entire time. And then... I don't know 
know why it decided that this was the staging to do. You, um, you. I mean, these can be combined, that's fine. Um, let me get rid of the tower. We can just balance on our engine, that's fine. I'm sure that's good for it. We've got left with a bunch of empty stages. This just seems unbelievably low for Delta V. Doesn't it? Is it? No, crossfeeding is off. Let's say it's not like stealing the fuel from the other stage. So these two stages, it does recognize that it's got fuel. I don't know why it doesn't think this stage has got fuel. Fuel crossfeed is off. Why does it not think these stages have anything? This engine... Maybe the thrust in this is just pathetic. Um, first of all, there shouldn't be a heat shield there. Now my DV is 1.1. Did it just do something horrible with my staging? Oh yeah, it thinks this engine is gonna fire there. Hey, but it's, it's recognizing the fuel count now. That's something. Okay, so there was something really odd going on. Oh, no, you gotta move down to here. 6.6, 6. okay. There's something about those, um, these spiders that I didn't like. Possibly, you know what, it might just be that their thrust is so low. Maybe that was kind of legit. But it also wasn't showing the fuel. I'm sure there's something that I was probably doing a little bit weird, but something is strange. Yeah, I did check the, um, the cross flow. It does seem to be off by default. So that, which is good, because that's that's one of the things I was starting to suspect. Now, but now all of a sudden our numbers are like a billion times better. A billion times better. I'd, I'd be happier if this wasn't so straight up, but I guess we'll take it. And... Oh, our thrust rate. I was going to say, this actually feels kind of not great for thrust weight, and that is indeed the case. So let's go ahead and give ourselves some extra oomph on takeoff. We still want to do now what I'm really worried about here is we might get some rocket wobble all right 7.7 I'm still very confused why the other one was no good and this feels like massive amounts of rubber kill for the map the moon but again maybe the balances are different serbs well we could Ooh, wow this thrust weight is actually than we need for efficiency. If I throw in uh, some skippers in here instead. Oh, wow. This is the orbital one. All right, fine. 1.6, wasn't it telling me we were like a two point something a second ago? Oh, it's cause, oh, hold on. Now I see what's going on. It's because it had split my engine staging again. I try again with the skipper, but then yeah, make sure once again that all three engines light at the same time. There we go, 
huge stabilizers. Uh, I don't think they're quite centered the way I want here. There we are. Okay. So, da 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 ba 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 ba. Staging seems okay. I'm not gonna put the side mounted thing. Now we got crazy amounts of stuff. Um, Disco Shrimp Mark II. I guess it's because it's overriding the workspace, but like, just make me a new shape in the workspace. Unless there's another way to click a button to save. Something's weird. Well, I mean, we can check the trip planner, but... We, we know that we can't really trust it. We're going to do this. This might be a one-way trip, in which case, deal with it. Um... Deal with it, Bill. All right, let's try to launch. I'm really worried about the stability of this thing, though. The longer these ships are, the harder they are to stabilize, and we were already having issues with that. But, I mean, I'm sure it's fine, right? Regular SAS on. I still can't hit spacebar to stage, because that broke. I might, I probably just have to quit and reload, but we'll see. Hey. feels much more what I'm used to. Start the gravity turn. Although, oh yeah, we are getting we are getting wobble. drift towards uh, the south or north. I don't know which way. We're all okay. would like to get a little flatter here. Really time to stick into it's okay. Keep going. Okay. Locked prograde for a sec here. Regular SAS. Okay, feeling relatively controlled. We are we are steeper than I would like. I can push past the uh, prograde marker now because the atmosphere is thinner. So the sideways pressure or max Q or whatever it is is less of an issue. Okay, I think I can go fully horizontal now. Okay, Apoapsis is already to space. I'm going to aim for about 100k, though, while trying to pre-flatten our orbit. Let's keep burning horizontally now. Feeling very stable. Nearly time for the next stage. We are pushing up the Apoapsis fairly high, but we're fairly far away here. There we go, and I've got to hit the button here. Um... a little bit more weight than we wanted, but so far we're still going to space? So it dropped the fairing, but not actually, when I, mean, I can't decouple it. So yeah, something, is the fuel tank directly attached to the engine? Was there some weird like node arrangement? It Maybe it's just a graphical bug, because otherwise our Delta V should be trash right now, right? Yank this until our apoapsis and periapsis look like they want to flip. One more. There you go, something like that. 
Start burning two and a half minutes. I will do a quick save, although apparently they might not be so good. There was no visual pop-up. I hit F5. Are none of my keyboard hotkeys working? I mean, my inputs are. Huh. Okay, make sure you're locked actually to maneuver node, please. This rotation's pretty slow. I am still worried that we've got all this weight on our back. Oh, we can turn on our spotlights. Quick save does not have a visual cue. Okay. So presumably it's there. See, that's why I, I do want a little bit more ambient light. It feels like very dark for like the streaming pur purposes. From gameplay, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Like I'm spending most of my time looking at that ball. Is this the maneuver node? You're overshooting it? I mean, it, it kind of makes sense that you're having some issues locking on there, but at least when we start the burn, the gambling will kick in to help us lock that. But it, if this overshoots again, uh, oh my God, the nav ball tooltip hides behind the nav ball. That's funny. The, uh, the the rendering cue is a little bit weird. Yeah, it did overshoot the maneuvering out again. I think the uh, the PID controllers need to be retuned. I think that was one of the issues we were having with the space plane. Fast forwarding a little here. Oh! I As soon as I time warped, it actually detached this rear part now all of a sudden. I say this is overtuned. So, tuning those things is very hard. So PID controllers um, stand for something that starts with letter P, integral derivative, something like that. It, it stands for things. Um, that's what you use uh, in programming. Okay, we're gonna start the burn soon to um, try to like catch something that's moving and stuff like that. Proportional, thank you. All right. Oh, look, the lights light up. That's cool. Green. Here, go for burn. Go for circularization burn. Uh, so they, they are quite tricky to tune because there's three different parameters that you keep wiggling the numbers for. And like, if some things are, say, too low, then it'll take forever to sort of line up. But at least you won't overshoot. But you probably want it to go faster. But if you go too much, it'll overshoot. And sometimes you can get in this, like, well, that camera shift is weird, but there you go. Red light. That's circular. That's pretty circular. Excellent. Now, we can plan a maneuver now for the moon rendezvous, but I kind of want to try to do the um, the eyeballing it thing, which I love to do in Kerbal when you're going to the moon. Uh, so we're relatively equatorial, which is good. That's important. Uh, wait, we can trash this maneuver. In fact, the maneuvers don't auto delete. I mean, I guess it's fine. So there's the moon. And whoa. Okay, there can't. Going so fast. What the? Okay. Is there some sort of gimbal locking? Oh yeah, when I'm looking straight down, there must be some sort of gimbal lock that happens, because it goes bonkers. Whereas if I just tilt us a little bit, now I can position it. Okay, they're gonna have to fix that. They're definitely gonna have to fix that because you're often want to gonna look straight down or straight up, like on the north or south pole, to make your plans. And if your camera gets gimbal locked at that point, it's really bad. I do like that you can see this little circle just faintly around the moon. There's an actual visual indicator for the sphere of influence, which is wonderful. So what we want to do, at least in KSP-1, for launch of the moon, is we're going to want to launch right around here is the maneuver. So if we planned one and plan to burn prograde, uh, we stretch this out. What's going to happen is at some point, I mean, it works though. I haven't done this yet in KSP2. At some point, right about now, there you go. We got our we got our Mooner encounter, which is cool. And I do see, you see the entry right here of where we're gonna enter the sphere of influence. Very cool graphic. I like that a lot. But with the moon, you don't actually have to plan a maneuver node. And I love to do that. So that's what I'm gonna do again. I'm going to time warp to right around here. A quick save before time warping, because it's always a good idea. And what you can do, we there we go, we get the sunrise. Oh, look how great. In the light, everything looks amazing. 
All right, so again, yeah, we still want to lock to prograde, so it's going to have to rotate. And we can literally just wait, because you can do your first moon landing. In fact, I usually do, when I'm in my career mode, I do my first moon landing before I've unlocked Patch Connex in KSP1. So you don't get your maneuver planning, you don't get your preview of um, of when you're you're going to intersect the moon or anything like that. I love the, I love the butt wiggle. Oh yeah, and I still have 5.5 Delta V left over now. Yeah, the, the VAB calculator is, is off, but I can see how that's a difficult thing to, uh, to, to do. There's a reason KSP1 didn't used to have Delta V calculations baked into the system. It took some very dedicated modders to work it out and then eventually got brought in. So very soon, we're going to see the moon rise up over here. We'll fast forward, but not too much. more because I'm impatient. There's the moon. So when the moon rises, step on the gas. Now we do have patch connex because I mean we're playing in, in sandbox mode so at some point we'll still see our orbit break but you don't need it. You'll see what your orbit is and all you have to do is wait until your, your apoapsis gets near the moon and then hit the brakes and you will encounter the moon. I do think that some of the VAB calculators must be based on sea level, but I think I think there's a little bit more than that. We'll see. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we will see our, our orbit intersect over here. But if you don't have that in KSP-1, or you're playing this in career mode where you don't have it, you just get it like close-ish, and then slap on the brakes. And you'll know you'll get and get some sort of encounter with the moon. Now, what I don't like here is we don't actually see what our moon encounter is going to look like. We're not getting a preview. We're sort of getting the entrance and exit. Can I... Okay, clicking on the moon doesn't do anything. Right clicking. If I focus on you... No, I'm not getting my orbit lines over here. Which it must know because it's... It's previewing the effect of the gravity well. Missing line is a known bug. So once we enter it, we'll be able to see it. Because right now, what I would like to do is tune a little bit more. Because right now, a tiny microscopic change now, by the time we get all the way over here, is going to be hundreds of kilometers. So we can use the tiniest amount of fuel now to adjust where we're going to encounter the moon. You know, ideally, what we'd like to do is get ourselves, I don't know, pick some number, 50k above the surface of the moon on our flyby, which will be the perfect place to do a retrograde burn there to in get ourselves into orbit of the moon. Now we have no idea if we're going to be super high, if we're going to smack into the moon. We have no clue. Luckily, we do have extra fuel, so we'll be doing those adjustments when we get in the sphere of influence of the moon itself. But ideally, we'd want to do it now. But again, if you um, if you were playing in the KSP-1 uh, career mode and you didn't have patch conics, you wouldn't be getting the preview of it anyway. But you probably wouldn't be going for moon landing at that point. You would just be going for an early flyby for some some easy science and contract completions and things like that. Um, anyway, with now, we can turn off the SAS just in case battery management is a problem. Uh, we do have solar panels. So can I hit this button? No, maybe, I guess, do you have to go through the trouble of defining your action groups for this solar panel button to work? I assumed it was just like, it was automatically going to wire into solar panels. You can see the moon PE. Is this periapsis the periapsis of, of my moon? On the map. Go to the map, you have two P. Oh! Oh shit, right here! Can I click it to keep it open? right click it that's an interesting question so let me uh lock myself to prograde which i already am if i give a tiny little tap of shift and x oh there we go we are getting closer and actually you can tell you're getting closer because the slingshot's gonna get more and more extreme good enough Perhaps it shouldn't be changed. I mean, it's just wiggling because there's probably rocket wiggle. All right, let's turn off the SAS here. 
There we go. Now we can actually go probably lower. I mean, the moon doesn't have an atmosphere for us to dodge. Um, you know what? I'm just convinced myself. I'll try to bring it down to like, I don't know, 25k. Oh! It went up. Oh, of course! We're probably going slightly over or slightly under the moon is what's going now. We're probably not entering an equatorial orbit, which actually becomes super obvious now. Now that we got closer, it's really obvious that our slingshot, like we're coming from an angle above or below. Um, I don't know if this is the entrance or the exit. Okay, we must be coming from below because then we're gonna slingshot above. So if I do a normal burn from where we are, just gonna wait for this to move. We're still a pretty heavy ship, so it's taking us a long time to rotate. Let's see what happens. Don't do an abnormal burn. There you go. You can see the periapsis drop. And the angle should be improving. Now, right now, we're aiming for moon collision. What I can do is just throw in a little bit more retrograde. Uh, oh, it's actually updated to show us that we're expected to smack into the moon, as I was saying. But now what I'll do is I'll burn retrograde a little bit to undo what we were doing in the previous step. I do like that we get a little preview of our ship here. That's kind of cool. With the breaking icon. Weird, actually. Even though I haven't burned here, all I've done is rotate it. It's saying we're not going to collide now. But maybe it's still busy recalculating. It thinks we're just going to buzz the surface slightly. All right, you know what? I'm just going to stop messing with it. We can we can do it better when we get in the sphere of influence because we're back to sort of a bunker system now. But yeah, we'll just stop playing. Okay, let's do the time warp again. Wow! That is some ex aggressive time warping. Holy cow. Time warp into the sphere of influence, and we'll get a proper look-see at what our situation is. Maybe. Maybe. Here it comes. I mean, it's mostly about, because we're moving this way. It's the moon coming to us. There we are. Oh, a little vocal thing. So there we are. So we could do an adjustment, but you know what? It's fine. We'll just plan to get to periapsis. We're very close to it. Uh, and then do a retrograde burn. Okay, this UI is a little annoying. And I'm gonna be looking forward to like our precision maneuver node thing, a little window where I can type in numbers. So we're gonna plan to do this and drop some sort of orbit. Now, ideally for a moon landing, we really would like to be in orbit. Um, I guess I could still do a normal burn here. Um, we would like to be in orbit around the equator because then, because the moon is rotating, right? It's orb it's, it, well, it's rotating. It's also orbiting, but it's rotating. We would like to be going in that same direction so that effectively we're going closer to the ground speed without having to burn as much off. Now we are going to be going into that rotation mostly at an angle, so it's not optimal, but we'll call it good enough. Is this the button to warp to the maneuver? Good, okay, so turn on SAS. Turn yourself to face the maneuver node. We'll do that first before we move to rotate there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 240 Delta V. That is really cheap. We actually have, we have so much Delta V still left in this stage here, and we're just going to be dumping it. In fact, <laughs> we should be on this stage here. So we, that's what I thought. I was pretty sure we were over engineering the mission, but the stats and especially like the bad launch on like the Mark 1 was like, Throwing me for a loop. But, you know, always better over-engineer than under engineer It's just taxpayer money. It's fine. Okay, so warp to maneuver. And I'm facing maneuver. Okay. I don't have full faith in the UI yet. Like, especially if the quick saves are apparently like, maybe not working properly. We'll see. All right. We are now 30 seconds away from our maneuver spot. We are... SAS is locked to the maneuver node. We've got... The, I mean, basically, it's just a retrograde burn. Like, it, that's why it's on top of the retrograde indicator. 20 seconds away. We 
are on the dark side of the moon. Oh, that'd be a good name for an album, wouldn't it? We're gonna stay out here so that we can actually see the changes happen. Yeah, I think the shadows are a little harsh. I think, um, yeah, the difference between light and dark is really intense. Three, two, one, go for burn. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. All right, pretty good. Now we can trash what's left of this now. So now we're in orbit around the moon. Everything is great and glorious. I think I'm gonna go and ditch this stage right now. Because even though we've got some fuel left in it, it's just gonna be a little cumbersome. So let's let's go and, uh, oh wait, I want, uh, I want radial in. I just like to ditch in a funky orbit here. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, the shadows on the moon should be harsh because there's no there's no diffuse effort, um, um, effect from an atmosphere. That, that is absolutely true. But from a gameplay point of view, a little softening is nice. Soft shadows are more computation and expensive though. Okay, so I'm gonna go and stage. Save. Oh yeah, spacebar does not work right now. What? Okay, that's fine. The separator went off in a weird direction. I thought it was the parachute leaving, but no, we're good. All right, all set. So we're gonna we're gonna set ourselves retrograde. And yeah, so this whole thing was supposed to get us to the moon, but we're gonna use this to deorbit, and then we'll go and ditch it, and then we'll still use this final engine over here for the actual landing, and hope that the separatron works properly there. We're just gonna fast forward until we get to the light side of the moon. Because landing in the dark sucks. That is one of the reasons we have the spotlights though, to like try to illuminate the ground if we were landing on the dark side. I don't think um, pa battery power goes down either. Okay, tell me there's a light side of the moon here. Are we eclipsed by Kerbin? What's going on? There we go. Because we want to be able to see the ground underneath us as we're coming in for a landing. I mean, admittedly, we're in a semi-polar orbit. And so the extremes are going to be a little harder to deal with, but there's still a light side. Okay. Boom. So I'm going to switch the nav ball here from orbit mode to surface speed, which is shockingly similar right now, partially because of our orbit. That's okay. Let's go a little bit more here. And what I want to do right now is I want to try to kill all of our horizontal speed, which right now all of our speed is almost completely horizontal. So I'm going to set it to retrograde. At some point, the retrograde is going to shift because we're going to start falling instead of going sideways. There might be a moment where our surface speed will get close to zero until it starts climbing because we're going to be descending. So I'm actually going to switch off of um, retrograde. I'm just going to go to stability mode because our retrograde marker is going to slide here. As we kill our horizontal speed, then our speed is going to be, all that's left is going to be the vertical component because we'll be going downwards. So our retrograde marker is going to climb up and our prograde marker is going to show up going straight down. Now, this isn't the most fuel efficient way to do this burn, but apparently we've got <clears throat> fuel to burn. So we're going to do that. It would be great. Oh, I do like um, throwing in either, again, Kerbal Engineer or Mech Jeb to get stats on our horizontal speed. Okay, horizontal speed was growing there, our surface speed was growing in. So we've presumably killed most of it at this point, which should be fairly obvious if we do move ourselves to retrograde here. Yeah, we are mostly vertical at this point. So we're going to call that probably good enough. The light strip looks like a fuel gauge or hit point bar. That's true. I wonder, um, it would be a very cool little mod to do to make the, the lights change colors or change amount of lights based on what's going on, based on some programmatic value. All right, I'm gonna go and ditch this part here, which hopefully is gonna separate properly. Otherwise we're gonna have a real bad time landing. Hey, excellent. We're also gonna deploy our landing gear now that I don't forget later. Not that I would ever do something like that. 
Okay, and we're just gonna drift downwards to the surface. So our surface velocity is gonna accelerate here as we descend. <laughs> we got an explosion. We're gonna make our own crater to land in is what we're gonna do. It's like, um, <laughs> default name six. <laughs> okay. Um, it's like that uh, that mission to like impact into a, an, a comet. We are accelerating. Now, one thing I don't know here is I don't know what our uh, suicide burn numbers look like. I'm gonna do a little test here um, uh, with a full throttle engine. Okay, that doesn't kill our speed as quick as I would like. Although we have still a long way to impact, but. If this number were like went to zero really fast, then we knew we'd had like a lot of, a lot of power. We're still pretty far away. So we shouldn't have to start a burn now. We could do a controlled descent the entire way. I could I could work the throttle to constantly descend at, you know, 100 meters per second, then as we cl closer, keep increasing it. But we'd be burning a lot of fuel for nothing. Now, I'm still currently I'm facing a uh, retrograde. We're gonna wanna turn this off because at some point, if I accidentally burn so much that rather than descending, we start moving up, my, um, my ship will wanna flip itself over. So I'm gonna just go to SAS mode to keep it stable. It would be interesting if they brought in um, some of the controls from something like MechJet, for example, which give you the ability to um, specify an exact um, orientation for this. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. When you're in surface mode, there's an actual up mode to lock on to? Oh, okay. 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 Now there's not a, uh, a negative horizontal velocity mode, but that's pretty cool. Okay, yeah, well, I think we're still very good on this. For lack of a suicide burn timer, we're gonna have to cross our fingers that we don't start our deceleration burn too late. Yeah, we have no sense of what our horizontal drift is. But I guess if, it, if we come down and it's looking like we are moving, we've got too much lateral motion, what we will do is is do a little bit of a burn to move up or like a semi hover for a second and just manually try to turn ourselves sideways here. I guess for now, I can still go retrograde. It's mostly gonna be up, but it would also help to eliminate a little bit of lateral motion. Okay, 10,000. Oh, auto flipped our modes to ground for the camera. Yeah, okay, no, I'm still burning too early. PE timer, in this case, the uh, I don't think the periapsis timer is gonna is giving us anything we want. Cause that's not time to impact. Up is radial out. Maybe it always existed. All right, it's not. Doesn't look like the most even of ground. Although it does look very like NASA photograph right over here. It needs to be more grainy, right? Like more old timey NASA photographs. What's the goal of this game? I don't know. It's sacrifice as many green frog people as possible. Okay, 1,000 feet. Uh, that was, is this ground mode as well? Oh my God. That's also really handy. That's an actual ground altimeter mode. Ground radar, as opposed to altitude. I'm really worried we're landing on a slope here, but yeah, I'm gonna lock us strictly to up. Also shadowed crater is making it a little hard to see exactly where we're landing. Burning a little. Yeah, we're gonna land in some dark spot here. No, 
I wish I derated my engine now. Oh, it's so dark. 20. 10. It's so dark! No! No! Up! Face up! No! I don't think the up mode is... I don't think it's doing anything. Maybe when you're touching the ground? Maybe only SAS is the option. Maybe... Because it's not doing the, uh, the up lock. Oh, man. Oh, I didn't notice that. Okay, stop. Okay, turn off SAS. Can you... Uh, it doesn't want to settle. Oh shit! I forgot to adjust the legs after we changed our engine. Yep. Okay, I gotta figure out which way is up and down and no, we're just gonna crash here. I got it! It's fine! It's fine! Alright, it's fine. Yeah, I didn't uh I didn't realize that our engine was too low now. Can I uh we got a tripod. Can I get up on this? Come on. I really wanted to try to land to the lit spot there, but I should have just gone higher before starting to maneuver, but I was trying to be quick and lazy. It still doesn't want to settle. I mean, admittedly, we got the... Here. Track the legs. Let's just see if we can land on our base. Um. Is it static now? I hate the lack of light. I really should have just gone up a little higher, giving me some more room to maneuver. I was trying to be so lazy and quick. Yeah, we got a new engine. That's fine. Who needs to leave? Okay. Bill, congratulations. Um, are you... Wow, you were kind of clipped inside there for a second, hovering in space. That was weird. There you go, now we'll move into the light. It'll be easier for the rescue ship to find you. If you're on a slightly flatter area as well. It's gonna be nice. Boom, there we are. Are you yawning? Seriously? How bored are you, Bill? You know what we need? We need this. See how, like, how dark his face is? Well, maybe he does have it. As I say, we need one of those, like, Hollywood, um... Why do I keep being told about an ineffective part? Is there an engine still trying to burn somewhere over there? Huh. I was gonna say, we need those Hollywood-style, like, the lights inside the helmet that just shine in people's faces that don't do anything. But I guess we do have that built in. Can I turn, turn on my own light? No, it looks like we don't have an option for that. Which I think KSB-1 did have the option for the helmet light, I'm not sure. Whoa, keyboard lag! Wow, okay. So it was fine the second time. Well, maybe while it's playing the, um, the flag animation? Except it's not playing a flag animation. Now it is. Well, that was weird. Ta da So we remove flag. I don't remember if that was something you used to be able to do. Try this again. Okay, now it's responding instantly. Oh. I love the, the flag planting animation. So yeah, that, that failed landing was entirely me just not going high enough after bailing. I should have just gone up a little higher, then then did the maneuver to try to settle somewhere. I was like, no, surely I can hop over there. But I got um, I got confused about what direction was like up and down, left and right on the ship. Because 
um, unless uh, unless you have some sort of obvious like physical thing on the outside of your ship to sort of like mark the top of it or whatever, you know, for like rotations, you're like, like, oh, I'm going to pitch downwards. And then all of a sudden your ship is going this way because that's sort of like the downward facing thing. So that was entirely my bad. There are definitely some weird things with the Delta V calculator. And I'm sure like the first version of our disco shrimp should have been fine. Again, I'm accepting that there might be some changes, like some mechanical changes in some of the fuel flow and weights and things like that, and uh, aerodynamics between KSP1 and KSP2. But even with that in mind, that first one should have been way more functional than it seemed to be. Look how proud Bill looks. There you go. We'll put him on the light side over here. Hide the UI. Uh, no, don't save screenshots to OneDrive. Ah! I'm still st I'm still having to wrestle with my uh, with my new computer. Screenshot this way anyway. I know that the um, the AMD what's it called adrenaline tool or whatever um, has uh, built in screenshot things. They currently turned off all those features, but I might go in and turn on the screenshot part again. We'll see. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Did you bring a plant and the helmet for infinite oxygen? It's fine. No, he can just hold his breath. It's okay. It's just Bill's just gonna hold his breath for a while. Yeah, there you go. That dude, that's not holding your breath. I like the extra little idle, idle animations though. These uh, new Kerbals definitely have a lot more personality. Love this uh, these suits as well. I don't know what these um, these little black bits are. That just looks like a good way to like get your helmet caught on stuff. Unless they're like faux whiskers to like warn you when you're bumping your head. I don't know. Oh man, there's even little scratches on the suit. Wow. I think those are floodlights? Maybe. I wonder if we can turn them. There's no light command. Hmm. The green tint in the Kerbals is chlorophyll. Right, they're just powered by sunlight. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Try L. Yeah, no, nothing. And yet, yeah, and with the ships, there's a button over here for it. Maybe that's just something they haven't implemented yet. Very big speakers, yeah. That's so that everyone can hear what uh, what Bill's. Is, he's scratching his butt. <laughs> oh, I love it. Should we try to see if uh, if uh, rover building works? That's something else we could try. So, let me get over here. This will be useful for the rescue or something. We can pretend, or maybe we just want to drive cars. You know. <clears throat> VAB. So we'll change our orientation to be flat. I have to say, I do like this a lot more than having to switch back and forth between two buildings. Because we have... We have wheels. Do they have chairs? There we go. We're, oh! Oh, a truck cab! Whoa. Huh. What's that, the cylinder view? Oh, those are just like the node latch points. Hmm. It will try it. It's new. Well, it's new to me. I don't know. Maybe this was like a late game unlock in. Uh... Wow. Okay. These Mark III. <laughs> okay. The Mark III wheels are serious business. Let me make a tricycle. Oh, this is going to be so unstable. I love it. You know what we need, actually, over here? We almost need, like, a ground plane indicator. I mean, I can put it... I could put the whole thing down lower, I suppose, and then check for, for clipping. Hey, eh, that's interesting. With this tool, I can't actually move the base part. I mean, I can move it this way, so I guess it's fine. 
Click the box in the bottom. Huh? Use side view. Oh, that's, that's right. We can get orthogonal views this way. That is so cool. I really like this blueprint view. I clicked it earlier and then forgot about it. Oh, that is impeccable. Actually, if I uh, grab this and explicitly move that that way, yeah, that is really, really good. Thanks for reminding me. We clicked it accidentally earlier and then I forgot. I just put this back and then holding shift for slightly more precise, I'll end up with something like that. Okay. <laughs> just want... I'm sure this works fine. Um, let's just deploy you to runway. Lunch. Okay, I don't know why the whole camera decided to tilt though. Also, can we fast forward to daytime? Whoa! Okay, max fast forward is really intense. Um, okay, nothing was responding. We have some power, because this base thing produces power. Is my parking brake on? No. Arrow keys aren't doing anything. Yeah, I know, I know it's never throttle based, but I was like, I was trying it because WASD are not working unless it's happening for the same reason that my space bar stopped working. That's entirely possible. Maybe. We're not pop or did I actually pause it? Oh, I had. There we go. Thank you. I guess when I stopped the time warp, I guess I must have smacked the button too many times and actually went into pause. There we go. I like this. Like just like it's like just a bulldog that doesn't have hind legs and instead uses its tail for support. This looks like a toy. Like this looks like a vehicle from um, from a cartoon that is designed to sell toys to kids. That's what this looks like. I wish there was a cockpit view. That would be great. Okay, I want to hit a hill because I want to see this thing just absolutely. Woohoo! Do a barrel roll! Oh, now I think we're stuck. There's like tire squealing sounds. Let's say if this had um a reaction wheel, we might be able to get it to flip back. I don't. We almost need like two two different modes: one that operates the reaction wheels with WASD, and another one that does the um, just you know the tires going backwards and forwards. Uh, to launch. Well, I'll have to fast forward through the night again, won't I? You retract the wheel. That's an interesting question. We have a rear landing gear that can retract. Okay, we are not paused. But I don't think these retract, but maybe. We'll see what happens when I hit G um, in a sec. So yeah, we have to be careful, Corn. I mean, obviously, this thing was never going to be stable. It was just so stupid looking that I had to try it. I love the uh, the suspension on these Mark Threes, though. Oh my god. I mean, if it wasn't a disaster waiting to happen, this is super cool. We could throw an extra stabilizing window or wheel in the front. Have a quad wheel set up. But in like this sort of plus pattern instead of the normal arrangement. It actually drives really well. There you go. Until until you take a corner too fast. Uh, I can't try retracting that. What happens if I retract? Do these fold up? No, it looks like the answer is no. How did you how did this pop up? No, it looks like it doesn't make a difference. If I go to retract mode, do they stop operating? Oh, they might be. 
You know, they still run. No, they don't, actually. I think they're on freewheeling. I don't think they operate when this is in retract mode. They don't physically retract. Huh. Okay. <laughs> Just don't make turns, yeah. It's not only for straight line. It's uh it's a drag racer. It's one of those um they say funny cars, but that's a different thing, isn't it? Scratch its belly. But this worked, like, this is crazy good. I wonder what other parts kind of fit this, uh, this size. Um, where's, like, payloads over here, right? I don't like that you can see inside. I guess I could use an adapter. Feels a little awkward, but it does feel like like we're we're building a lorry here, right? Or some other person's name. Oh, yeah, we do have fairings as well. Engine nut, multi-engine nut, but we can treat it as an end cap. And then we could do like a train thing almost where we uh There you go. It's set up to be bi-directional. Probably yeah, they're not aligned. So left mode over here. Grab this. God, this is such a useful tool. Building ships is going to be a lot better with these UI tools than it was previously. It actually is a big improvement. <laughs> we still get these! Lack of stellar exposure. Do we have like a broken... Like, do we still have a solar panel sitting on moon that is trying to operate? What? Must be solar panel in the shadow of the moon. Like... That part's just gone, man. Just just let it go. The Crimson Centipede. Clarkson's limousine from Top Gear. Ooh! Oh, I haven't finished watching the second season of Clarkson's Farm. I really should do that. I think it's broken. If I hit escape, I'm getting the sound like the menu is opening and closing. I guess it was time for a reboot anyway for our buttons to work. Hmm. Very early access. <clears throat> more stability in my early access games i can be forgiving a lot of things right at release there's a reason i'm not usually right on the the front of the train to jump on something in early access but um this is the last autosave yeah we never saved after that so there was an autosave while we were staring at bill Carman on the planet here or on moon So if we go to the um, tracking station, yeah, see these notifications. Control. Okay, that's garbage that we can get rid of. This orbit of them. It's not going away. I guess we can't clean up our garbage. Okay. Apparently I can I I could totally recover that. I mean, I guess it is sandbox mode, so fair enough. Oh, that UI. That UI is bad. I can't I can't, I can't see all the buttons. Huh. 
So that's gonna be annoying because presumably it's something here that's got the complaint. Huh. Yeah, here, this, this here, they're not changing the level of detail in, uh, in the tracking station. Which, honestly, you're not really, this tracking station's not really meant to zoom in. So, I'm not, I'm not really putting a negative on here. It's just not loading the next level of detail here. Maybe they should do themselves a favor and stop you, like, maybe here? So you don't zoom any further? I don't know. That's kind of a little annoying. That's too bad. Now, I, I don't think there's any way to get rid of this because I can't get rid of this. And even, I, none of these should be solar panel based stuff anyway. So. I do like these filters. Like these screens are great. And that you can favorite things as well, which is nice. Here, Bill Kerman, you're my favorite. That's really good. It doesn't work. Like, everything about this reeks not of early access, but of, uh, we really didn't want to release right now, but we kind of wanted to make sure to, like, book this money, and we'd sort of made some promises. There's, there's a lot of things in here do reek of, like, schedule slippage, and they fell behind on some things. Um, the UI not working in places. Again, <laughs> and my first thing is it was, like, the, um, the UI menu here. Like, literally, it doesn't highlight the buttons properly to show you which one's selected until you like mouse over and like refreshes things. This, re this is a really quick little fix, generally speaking. Clearly, like cl when it loads, it loads button states for things. But like there's missing a function call or like a little hook. Something's just gotta be like reconnected somewhere. Because most of these work fine, but these don't. So something's not hooked in here properly as an event listener. And it feels like it would be the very first time you open the screen. Maybe it's only happening like this on my computer. But like the first time you open the screen, you notice something like that. Oh, even here, some of these highlights. I didn't, I didn't notice it turn from gray to black either. It's like, but they didn't have time to fix that. I'm, I'm not saying that they didn't want to, or they were lazy about it. I think it was, I'm, I'm sure it's on their, whatever they're using to track issues, their, their Slack or whatever. Um. Oh, that was weird. When I tab into the game, are you guys still hearing me fine? When I'm tabbed into the game, uh, OBS is not updating my mic volume uh, meters in real time. But if I'm clicked anywhere out of the game, not even in OBS, I've clicked on a random window, now those meters are updating in real time. Huh, that's very odd. So yeah, I, I, I'm sure, yeah, it's it's loaded in their, their list of issues to deal with, and they literally didn't have time to do what represents probably a relatively small task, which tells you they've probably been doing with way more important tasks, right? I'm not criticizing the programmers or anything like that. Um, I, I suspect they're just, the schedule kept slipping and slipping and slipping, and they had to prioritize things to make, they either probably had a contract at a certain point for the early access, like has to come out at a certain time for various reasons, uh, or maybe there's penalties and things. So they're like, well, we'll put it out. We've played a lot of early access games on the channel. Um, and I like a lot of things to KSP2. I think it's going to be a great game. Some of those some of those things are a little disappointing. And, and I'm a little worried, like, what's, what's the management situation over there? I mean, I was a programmer, so I never blame the programmers. I just play management all the time. <laughs> but obviously, this save can't be continued. If I can't clear out the debris, and if we keep getting these notifications about some part lacking solar exposure, which is probably some solar panel debris here or there, I mean, that's, that's, I'll, I'll start a new save, which I guess is, is fine because it's sandbox. It's not like I'm progressing anything that matters, right? Um, save and exit. If I don't care about progressing this save because I haven't invested anything in it, really, there's nothing stopping me from being like, all right, default two. Sounds good. Oh, I, I, I gotta turn off that new user experience so it doesn't give me all these pop-ups. Speaking as a project manager, always my fault. Yeah. As someone who's management, it's definitely execs. <laughs> you just keep blaming someone else. We can launch one of these pre-made ships. Oh, look at these rovers. The Crater Crusher? I like it. 
Yeah. Go away, Paige. I don't need you. Sorry, I forgot to turn off the button. I'm sorry, do you have rockets? So we got Oct Wheel. What's with the, um. Oh, it's a solar panel. Oh my god, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. What? What just happened? Wait, did the other solar panel deploy downwards? Oh, I guess it's only meant to deploy into space. Why do we have a notification all of a sudden? I guess the solar panel for a second wasn't working. Is that what this is designed to do? Hey, good news, the space bar is working in. Um, that already ran out of juice. Maybe this is supposed to work better on like the moon. Oh my God, it had so many reaction wheels. Maybe that's supposed to work on the moon or even Minmus to take off. So many reaction wheels. Oh, and RCS. Oh, that's cool. What else we got? Um... Let me recover so it doesn't just sit around. And then go there. Okay. And then launch. Visit of rover. Modular hub. They've got some planes in here. What does this thing look like? Ooh, look at the parts load in. Lots of RC oh, look at the wobble. Well, I mean, that might just be a, a balance thing here. Look how huge, look at this. And it only has 4K. Oh, that partially might be calculating again. Yeah, the sea level thrust with some of these. I don't actually want to fly you. I want to look at more stuff. Boat launch. I don't know how many boats right now. I want to fly another plane. We're gonna be wrapping up the stream in a second. I've been streaming for about three hours now. Uh, I'm looking for here. Oh, launch pad. All right, wrong one. Runway. What is this plane? All right, big. What do you call? Was this Delta Wing? that up I do like the cockpits are awesome they're really great now in that um, the screenshot on the loading screen the um, the canopy is open I wonder if there's a way to do that probably just part of the screenshot but you never know I'm happy the space bar is working in I don't know why that started to break likes to start off to the side here. There we go. Positive rate. Gear up. It's got retractable gears here, but not the front wheel. This is the same thing. Kerbal never really had, like, great landing gear options. It's really nose-heavy. Turn on this, yes. Hold that a little bit more. Oh, we can, uh... Roll. Roll. Um. There we go. I might have had my hands in the wrong place. Hey, is there still um? In KSP-1, there was like a, a little bridge or there was a gap in one of these buildings you could fly through. Does that still exist here? Also, look at the, uh, we have like, these These are aliasing glitches here, right? You see this? Sort of a moip pattern, aliasing glitch kind of thing. Did it reset my aliasing settings? Well, there's no sharp edge in here, but or is it the filtering? Something is... The anisotropic or whatever filtering is on. I 
think it's working fine internally, but maybe not on the edge of some of these textures. There is something odd. Like it, it's almost like a little scintillating effect. I don't know how much it shows up on the stream. It's quite distracting. I don't think it's level of detail in this case. I suspect it has something to do with either um, aliasing or uh, filtering, depending on it, if, whether or not it's internal to a, a texture or not. Like we're seeing a lot of weird things with clouds when you're in orbit. Look at this runway over here. Like, does not don't you see like strong aliasing effects? Did it reset? It's whiskey Did it and chocolate. My aliasing option? That's possible. I uh, do this and pause. Hey, Nallard, thank you. My wants to know she blames you for a new obsession with against the storm. Yes, your fault. I burned her pizza last. <gasps> oh, can we order pizza tonight? All I need to do is sit. Oh, I put in waiting for me. Never mind. Hey, thank you. Um, yeah, against the storm is pretty compelling. See, it's still set to 8x, and we got some filtering here. I mean, it's, that's I, that's not the really sort of thing I, I I pick on like or care necessarily that much. It is weirdly distracting. Yeah, and I don't know. It, some of it's going to be more or less visible on stream because like compression can like somehow can can dampen some of these because it makes the images a little bit more fuzzy. I, up close, all these parts look fantastic, though. Really, really good. Lots of details. I mean, I love that we could see the scratches on Bill's helmet. Poor Bill. Stranded on a moon in another save. Yeah, the, yeah, the level of detail on the uh, trees. And then when we, uh, our very first landing, uh, when we landed, the grass was, like, super mega glitched. I do like the heat effect coming out of the engine, though. This distortion right here. That's a nice touch. All right, let's go into glider mode. Point landing gear. What if the landing gears add more drag? The pop in with the trees is, it's not the end of the world, but it's a little weird. Also, it is it's actually a little bit weird that it's not happening sort of at a definitive line. It's like you get close enough, it's like, okay, let's start filling these cells with trees. That's really interesting. I don't think I've seen that before. Arguably it makes the, the pop-in look less artificial. Because it's not just a straight line. And yeah, the... I don't know if those are contrails. But like, the little pressure that generates the... Uh, like the high-pressure vortices that generates the little fog effect. Especially here, as so we change, like, uh, the pressure. I mean, right now, it's starting to look like filled diamonds instead of clouds, but still. That is really cool. I don't think the trees have hitboxes. Nor do I expect them to. We don't have any cursed grass here, so that's nice. Well, maybe maybe it'll show up when we uh, when we deploy here. Yeah, I can't I actually don't have enough pitch up to flare. Probably because my speed's a little low. Oh my god, look at the wheel! <laughs> oh, the trees aren't actually right on the ground. They're hovering above the ground. <laughs> oh, oh my god. That is the greatest thing ever. Oh shit. Oh, that's wonderful. Is the wheel... Are we below ground level? Why, why is it... Maybe it's a reflection effect. But like, it's looking like it's going transparent or something. Well, there wouldn't be a reflection on the, the black rubber. Also, like, the physics for this just keeps it moving. And yeah, I don't mind that some of this is clipping under the ground. Like, I'm not expecting a um, mesh perfect hitbox. It's whiskey, whiskey and chocolate. chocolate! That would be a waste of, of CPU. Yeah, you just use simple, simple colliders, spheres, boxes, capsules. Reminds me of old school MS Flight Sim, and remember the wireframe graphics MS Flight Sim for Apple. I didn't play it on uh, the Apple too, but I did play. It's still going. It's a perpetual motion wheel. <laughs> um, but I did play a very early version of it in. 
God, I don't know when it was. I don't remember the timelines of things. But yeah. Quick carve the energy. It won't stop! Can't stop! Yeah, we don't have any cursed grass around here. And again, maybe maybe the cursed grass wouldn't have been there if I would reloaded our previous thing either. <laughs> yeah, I think this Kerbal successfully died. I don't know if there's a... I'm using the square brackets trying to change vehicles. I mean, and again, there's some sort of visual thing that happens there, but I never catch it. Oh, it's these other speed... Oh! I think what's happening is when the wheel comes slightly enough to a stop, it's, yeah, it's enabling the full time controls as opposed to just the physics warping one. <laughs> oh, I'm so, I'm so tickled. Let's recover the vessel. Let's recover this wheel. And again, yeah, I'm a little... So we don't want River to launch, and I don't necessarily want Tracking Station. I want KSC. Oh, oh. Inactive Crash Course. Mm, I'm pretty sure my Crash Courses are very active, thank you. So presumably there's still some parts left over here again that didn't get cleaned up. Away page. Oh yeah, you're still here. Yeah. Here, let's let's do some more uh, creative crashing. Control authority to aim downwards because of the server. I guess they can just stage again. Let them go off. Cool, we just missiled ourselves. There we go. There we go. No, don't, don't keep turning. There we go. Perfect. enough oh we need more uh we need more reaction wheels i was trying to hit this and this has gimbling but not enough curses this vessel needs more reaction wheels to be uh properly aimable <laughs> the blong sound effect was fantastic oh it was so good what else you got in here? Uh, what is modular hub? Is this just an example of a space station part? Yeah. Yeah, let's see what we can do with it. Knock it over. This way. I should probably deploy these, but there you go. Oh, no, keep. OK, we can roll. That's fine. I was hoping to see if we could uh, keep moving like a stick. Ooh, roll. There you go. Come on. We can rock ourselves off of this. Okay, Maybe with RCS. No, I think we're jammed. Oh, we're. Oh, we're lying flat on the uh, solar panel right here. Oh, should have broken it off. I'm if I tried to deploy. Well, that was unexpected. Yeah, snap these off. Perfect. There we go. Now we can roll. Yeah. Oh, seriously? Yeah, but let me let me let me fly the rest of this. There's still a vessel over there. How do I? Okay, square brackets don't let us change vehicles. Maybe it's a different hotkey. I can probably take control of it at the tracking station. Oh, 
Hang on. Did it go here? I think I just double clicked on it and it gave me control. Does it say um, with KSP one, there's a mod that lets you alt click to take control of vessels, which is nice. Oh no, no vessel control. I guess maybe there's no. Yeah, okay. There's nowhere for a Kerbal to be in here anymore. Okay. And there's no, uh, there's probably no probe. There's one other plane. I want to see what they had. The jumping fleet or, oh no, that's a rocket. Okay, yeah, that's, that's a good Mark 1 vessel. Maybe it's in here for like... Like, quick, quick press previews. Bong! I love that bong sound. Okay, so... I see other bits from our spaceship coming back down. After my staging? Those are probably the SRBs coming back down. <laughs> oh man well the Kerbal fun is certainly still here that has not been lost in any way whatsoever this is me intentionally spinning this giving Tim C. Kerman a great time oh we have parachutes I think the answer is no yeah no See, look at like this grainy, weird, muddy texture thing going on. It'd almost make sense if there was a full screen film grain to give it that old timey, like rocketry look, but it's not. I don't know if you can see the RCS activating. Maybe we're just, maybe we just don't see the effect in the atmosphere. It is, it is using up the uh, monopropellant. I mean, we're burning off a little bit of speed, but no. Yeah, I guess the clouds, but even underneath the clouds, I guess it's fine. Yeah, I guess it's the cloud effect that's leading to weirdness. I love the water here though. That's great. But yeah, we're still getting that aliasing something scintillation effect. With the runway, I kind of expect it to be a single texture, so that maybe it's more of a filtering thing. I don't know. Anyway, we're about to mush here. <coughs> Troubles are tough, but I don't think they're that tough. Practice leads to perfection, you guys. The later lines and grain came from the clouds. Mm -hmm. Darn word for the highest jump. <laughs> We're going to wrap up our stream today. That was a fun three hours. Tomorrow we're streaming some more. So tomorrow um, we're supposed to be streaming Dwarf Fortress. Which I think is still what's going to happen. Well, the part of me is thinking we could make up some other Kerbal missions and things like that. Um, we could try docking. Maybe, maybe we end up with a mix. We might do all Dwarf Fortress. I don't know. Oh, shoot. I have to move my... Uh, to move my save over from the other computer. Hmm. What happened to Satisfactory? Satisfactory is never continuing. Satisfactory was unsatisfactory to me. I did not enjoy it personally. Doesn't mean it's a bad game, but I did not personally enjoy it. Uh, I much prefer playing Factorio Dyson Sphere Program. So, uh, we'll see. But, but yeah, we'll see. I mean, KSP should be good for views, especially if we do it a little bit more serious. I mean, the moon mission was attempting to be serious. Um, and then after that was just goofing around and testing some things, but, um, we might be able to do some more complex stuff, but there's, there's definitely some things that are just sort of glitchy and I'm worried that it'll lead to some frustration. I'll give it some think. If I can think of, um, a good, uh, composition for a mission for us to do that will be maybe a little bit resilient to some things going a little bit oddly, then we might do that. We could look, we could do Kerbal Space Program 1 as well. Load up KSP with some nice, sweet mods. Play that instead. Um, but we'll see. So I don't know what tomorrow is going to be. Um, Dwarf Fortress and or some version of Cable Space Program for various reasons. We shall see what it is. Uh, but uh, for now, we're going to we're gonna end it. I'm going to go and get that uh, that Putin that was sent to me by Kerbal King. Thank you very much for that treat stream. 
tough to reheat it, but that's going to be okay. And I'm going to see you guys tomorrow at noon Eastern time for whatever. Uh, Monday is Dyson Sphere program. Wednesday is a big old question mark. Maybe Wednesday will be taken over by some curbling. We'll see. But yeah, and then we'll see what happens tomorrow. Bye, everyone.